All right, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to another video. I just sort of had my mind blown a little bit. Um, I was sitting here playing fractals. Uh, I'm really good at getting my daily fractals in each day at the moment. Uh, I sit down, I play fractals. It says new build available, and I think, oh my god, a new build. Uh, and yeah, of course, it's Tuesday. And in fact, and this is really nuts. M March has gone so fast for me. Uh, it's the Super Adventure Box. It's the start of April. Obviously, it's not quite April yet, but they always put the festival in just a little bit early. And it's funny um, because I've actually been a little bit more into achievement points and stuff uh, the past couple of weeks. And I've been thinking, you know, last year, barely playing the game and stuff, I missed. And to be honest, even when I was playing a lot of this game, I... Uh, I really fell out with the, the festivals. Festival AP was kind of horrible. But you get a lot of AP from festivals. And I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice if there was a festival going on. I'd actually probably do it. And then boom, today, suddenly the Super Adventure Box is out. So, um, that's vaguely interesting. I was just going to sit down and go and play it. But I have noticed in the... Uh, this was just a few minutes ago, really, the patch came out. On uh, the wiki for the patch notes, basically I, I finished my fractals, patched the game. I noticed that there's this new thing on the tooltips. Can you see on this Ascended Ring, for example, I got as a drop? It says ascended now. There's like new flavor, te or they've colored the tier that the loot is, which is interesting. So I went to the uh, the wiki thinking, well, okay, let's let's see why they've done that. What's their justification? Is this setting up up something in the future with items? Uh, which I would hope it is actually. I've, I really, so as you guys know, I don't really like the way that the legendary situation is at the moment, and I like the idea that maybe they mess with some of these. Anyway, uh, they had nothing about the tooltips, but they did say with the Super Adventure Box. There is, I can't remember now exactly what the phrasing is. It's something like, um, oh, there's a test zone. It's, oh, I, I think I remember. It says there's two worlds plus a test zone, a test area. So I said in Spud Guild chat, what, what is that? Is that new? What, does anyone know what that means? Uh, because if you guys will remember, there have been previews for World 3 in the game before. And people said, yeah, it's something new. There's something new that's been added. So that is the extent of what I know. I think there's actually a blog post on the official website up as well, which I haven't read and, and won't read. What we're going to do is we're going to go into Super Venture Box and we're going to see what this update is, uh, which hopefully will be really exciting. Um, not to go over information everybody obviously already knows for too long, but anyone out of the loop. Super Venture Box came out um, back in 2013, April Fools, and there was just one world. And then that summer, they did this thing called the Back to School Update, late summer, which added a second world, World 2. And there's always been art and suggestion that there'd be four worlds to the Super Adventure Box. But that was back in 2013 that World 1 and 2 got added. It's now 10 years later. It's 2023. Super and that uh, there's mind blowing all on its own, but there has never been world three or four. They've never got round to adding it um, due to development constraints and prioritizing other areas and stuff. Um, actually, the original like person with the big idea for a super adventure box doesn't even work at ArenaNet anymore. It, so the the idea that there'd be future Super Adventure Box worlds is something I've always cared about deeply because I really like the Super Adventure Box, but it is one of those difficult things when clearly they've been pulling resources out of the game over and over and over and it's like they can barely handle getting living world and expansions out let alone all this additional stuff where would they ever find the time for it uh so there have been some little things there was back when world 2 itself came out there was like a little preview for world 3 where you went to some caves if you watch my super adventure box let's play because i did indeed do one i talk all about that um then they ripped the preview out and you can't do it anymore like there used to be a gin with some pools of water and stuff then there was nothing, I think around 2020, three years ago, and this to my, my mind is super recent memory, around 2020, I think there was an official post where they said, we will do another Super Adventure Box World. Like, there was a, a, a proper comment where they said, it is something we will do. Um, but that was like, just before the End of Dragons announcement, I think. Then we had a year waiting for End of Dragons, two years waiting for End of Dragons, and now it's been a year since End of Dragons. So this actually, I would have thought, could have been a candidate for for the full World 3 to come in the game. If they were going to do it, it's been a quiet year for Guild Wars as far as I'm concerned. Yes, Living World Season 1 came back, but you can tell, you know, it's not like they really remade Living World Season 1. And it was very cleverly done and stuff, but let, let's face it, they were light on stuff. Um, 
Giala Delve, the one living world patch we've had for a whole year, was a light patch. Everything's been very, very light. And so you might think, well, maybe that's left them space to do World 3. Or maybe you look at that and say, well, look, that's just proof there'll never be a World 3. Anyway, uh, it looks like they're following through substantively, maybe, hopefully, on that comment that there will be one. And there's some kind of update. And I really, I don't, I don't know anything here. Uh, so let's go on in and let's play. I was thinking of just doing a random, like, live stream or video where I just do a playthrough. Because uh, I've got a lot to talk about. And as far as my channel's concerned, I haven't done a video for, what, two weeks? We did a fishing stream. And two weeks have passed in the blink of the eye. I'm very busy IRL at the moment because I'm in the middle of a move. Uh, I mentioned this on very, very briefly at the end of a video probably about three weeks ago. And for the next two weeks, I'm going to continue being very busy. But I wanted to squeeze in little things. What I really want to do is FF6 and Tomb Raider. But I don't want to like... When I go to them, I want to finish them. And I don't know what kind of free time I'll have. So we'll just squeeze in random stuff like this, like the fishing video. So this is kind of perfect. So let's get in. Let's see what they've done. There are other things as well, like guild decorations. And there's a lot of stuff talking about like this, okay? On the patch notes. Generation 1 chest. So Gen 1, I guess what this is, is this is primitive super adventure box weapons. Super Adventure Box weapons with no effects or limited effects. That's the torch. That's probably the shiniest we'll see. Now, I don't know if they've added a new collection to this. I'm quite interested in all this at the moment because um, just before we get in, um, I have been playing a lot of Guild Wars lately. And uh, so what I've been doing is I've started adding this achievement point filter, right? So you add this and what this does is while it's filtered, you will no longer see achievements that you've already completed, right? So, you see here, when I, when this is just the default UI right now, you can scroll through, you'll see raids on there, you'll see, you know, um, what other categories of... Okay, you'll see fractals, you'll see strikes. But since I've got all of these achievements now, that's one of the things I've done recently. If I put the filter on, it dramatically shrinks the list. So you can see what I actually have left to do. So for PvP... All my, the, the PvP achievements I have are activity achievements, right? Or for World vs. World, there's like... World vs. World is obviously the gameplay, the game type that I play the least of. But I've even been in there a lot recently. Uh, so you see there's lots. But I can see like what I'm missing from Season 1, for example. You'll see that I basically don't have most of the, uh, the End of Dragons stuff done. Um, but I made loads of progress recently on rare collections. These are my only two rare collections left in the game to get. Some of these were so expensive. The Ice Brood Saga ones were a nightmare. Like the Charged Stormcaller one, I've just finished. I don't even know how I would filter for it. It's it's mental how expensive some of that stuff was. I've got it all done now. Every single rare collection in the game. Except gold. I need to get lucky on one of these. As soon as I get lucky on one of them, I've got all the mats to craft all the other stuff. But i just got to get lucky. Ugh. And Abyssal is like pretty insane, to be honest. I'd rather get Fractal God before I do that. Um, but yeah, I'm interested because there's festival collections. Let's put our filter back on. And I wanted to see... Wait, that is not on. Add achievement points. Okay, yeah, it's still just the Gold Claw collection, which is like find one of the jokey Gold Claw books each time. And then uh, the Crimson stuff. So I'm hoping to finish the Crimson stuff this year. That will give me an infusion as well, which would be quite cool. Hopefully I can do that. It means I'll have to do the dailies and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, and I suppose... Yeah, festivals are now here. I've got these I can do as well. It says, offer to help Motto by exploring the World 3 test zone. Interesting. So wait, do I speak to him to do it? By the way, this might be really good or it could be really tiny and crap. I don't know. To a certain extent, okay, no matter what this is going to be like as this video goes along, I like this change, even if it's tiny, because, again, it just reinforces their statement from a few years ago, which is getting more and more buried, which is, you know, what this is, is this is a renewed commitment to the super adventure box and establishing the idea that look, they really do want to do it you know and that that that's communication that's important it's the kind of communication they could deliver through a blog post anyway but maybe that's what their blog post is saying so speaking to him doesn't seem to do anything also i don't know if the gem stores added a bunch of new crap it's probably a new set oh there's the super turtle i think that was from a while ago i've never really been too, too into looking at that stuff um so yeah there's the mini pro there's the reality rig mark three they keep adding these. They're chest pieces that make you look like you're from Tron or whatever, but I don't really know. 
You can see the new tooltip there again with the exotic in there. I guess eventually we'll get an ascended one and that will be in some way interesting. I don't know if they've added a new mini. The other thing is, of course, decorations. So there was a video I was so close to making, guys. And you might actually see, okay? Like, I might dot in some fishing videos. I might, you know, we'll do this today. But I was really interested um, in Guildhall decorations again. Now, you guys know me. I, I tend to be interested in that. But why I was interested is because I've been raiding a lot. Probably the past two months... Every week I've got almost every LI that's possible and done like... I've basically got really into pug raiding or raiding with the spuds. Uh, we cleared HCCM again this week. You know, I've been enjoying a lot of that game, uh, that side of the game. And the other thing I've been doing is... Um, sorry if this is all too boring. I'll get over it in a second. Because I'm getting achievements. I need to break the Shatterer's Break Bar five more times. And this is insanely easy now because of all the power creep, because of the EMPs and stuff. Actually, guys, I beat the Shatterer the other day... I'm ge genuinely serious in the open world in about 20 seconds. Seriously. The Shatter has this ability where he gets a break bar, right? And the break bar triggers about 20 seconds into the fight. Something like that. I was doing... I, I, I went to LFG. I squatted up. I said, let's beat the Shatterer and break the break bar. I put a little EMP down. I put the arrow squad marker on it. And then we just went and hit him, right? By the time of that break bar attack, which is about 20 seconds in, he was on like 60% health. Like 40% of his health was already gone. We broke the bar, and then he died in the next five, six seconds. That was it. That was the whole fight. We never saw the crystal phase where he summons those crystals. We never saw... We saw basically the Shara tried one attack, and then he died. That's how fucking bad the power creep is. I mean, it is crazy. Um, and that wasn't like an organized run or anything. You guys have got to remember... When Triple Trouble came out, it was a big guild. We used to like do like speed clears of the different uh, world bosses and try to optimize to the absolute perfection that we possibly could. And even then, you'd never get kills like that. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I've been killing the Shatterer. I've been raiding. And what does the Shatterer drop? Well, he drops those crystals very rarely, doesn't he? That are for Guildhall decorations. And sometimes very rarely when you kill, like, Morgamoth, you'll get one of the Morgamoth mandibles or whatever. There's the Triple Trouble one as well. There are certain very rare, um... Rewards you get there, Guildhall decorations, and then of course there's loads of them you get from raids, and people use them as kill proofs. Oh, man, I could rant about kill proofs pretty hardcore to you guys. I'll, I'll try to refrain myself. Anyway, um, well, what do they do? Well, they make trophies for your Guildhall, and then you can combine loads of bronze trophies into silver trophies, and loads of silver trophies into gold trophies. So that's a side of Guildhall decorations that I skipped out on in the past. See, I got really big on it. And, you know, we got, like, hundreds of the giant snow stuff. You know, we made sure we got one of every plant, for example. You know, we uh, you know we got hundreds of the Ascalon trees. We really went crazy with the decorations. Like, I spent so much money. Not just, like, guild donation money, but, um, like, my own money. Like, I would spend, like, 40 quid purely on gems, purely to turn into gold, purely to make more decorations. Just just because I found it fun filling it all out, right? And it was very expensive. But the thing I skipped out on, this was back when Heart of Thorns was new. The thing that I skipped out, and you know, the couple of years after, were the trophies because we just didn't have those kinds of resources, you know? A lot of the raid wings weren't even out at the time. So I was I beat the Shatterer recently, and I, I had a look at our storage, and I realized in the intervening years... The Spuds have obviously been playing a load of games. I may not have been raiding a lot for many years, but the Spuds have been. And suddenly, or like beating world bosses and stuff, suddenly we have like 300 Chakais, and we have like, you know, 500 Desmina tokens, or thousands of, you know, thousands of Karens and stuff. So suddenly, so if I type gold, okay, I think the Spud, what I wanted to do was a video where I go get, get back into it with the crafting, and I get spud all of the gold stuff. This is things that um, lots of like dedicated PvE guilds will have had for years, but I, I haven't taken the time to actually look at for spud. So I could craft up... We already have gold Karen, gold Deimos, gold Gorsival. You know, we've got quite a few. And in fact, crucially, we have some silver ones. Now, the really tricky ones are the Morgamoth. Like, Morgamoth, for example. He's brutal. It's 10 mandibles per bronze. 
And the mandibles are rare, okay? They re drop very rarely, and doing dragon stand takes a long time. But I notice it, you notice here, we've got four silver ones already. I vaguely remember crafting those years ago. So we only need to craft one more silver, and then I can get gold. I was locked at just four, four of them last time I did it, but we have enough now. So, uh, yeah, I think it might be really cool to get every single gold statue. I don't think we'll get gold triple trouble. I think that's the thing that gets run so rarely. Um... Uh, we probably are not there that that's the big dick one that one's really really rough but uh yeah it could be cool and i was going to do a video just just you know i streaming away doing the scribing and things the other thing that happened was about uh a month ago um i when i was making some of my legendary armor i knew i was going to be getting a, a bunch of extra money a few weeks later so i took 300 gold out of the guild bank because i didn't know how much money we had and then paid it back a few weeks later. I was a little bit selfish here. So here I... That, that's me depositing the 300. Here's me withdrawing. So that was like last month I did it. But anyway, I had a look. And I saw we've actually got thousands of gold and lots of items. So I could take this out, scribe with it, and get the guild, all the gold trophies. So that was a, a fun thing that I was interested in. And why that loops into the Super Adventure Box, if we go all the way back through, is um, they've just added even more sab festival items and for the past two years or so i haven't done i haven't kept up with festival uh decorations especially last year obviously last year so there's a bunch of sab items that i'm interested in too and i wonder what they've just added um so anyway uh, all of that is to say lots of reasons to talk about the super adventure box update let's go in let's see what we've got and um oh actually should i play it on my rev i'm only on my rev because i was just on my rev in fractals Maybe, uh, maybe I'll do it on Liss. Let's do it on Liss. Because she was the original Super Adventure Box character that I played on. Okay, there's probably a ton of other things that I can rant about and things that I've been doing with various characters. I played quite a lot of this game's PvP as well over the past month-ish. Oh, and there's my muscle memory taking me to World vs. World, which is a bit bizarre. Because that's probably where most of my playtime goes. PvP feels really awful at the moment. There's there's basically zero builds I enjoy playing. This is actually for me, I'm not this is not an objective thing, okay? And this is not a criticism of the current balance that I think holds any weight whatsoever, but just as an observation, I have tried so many builds in PvP at the moment, and the the diversity there is is awful. And like the types of builds that are around and the way they play, they're all so unfun. Basically, anything I've ever had fun playing on is just in the dump now. <laughs> um, and there's some things that are still vaguely fun, but there's just so little diversity. It kind of sucks. Anyway, whatever. Right, let's, uh, yeah, let's play through. Let's fall down immediately. That's a good start. And um, we do not need Ark on. Ark is probably broke as well, so let's just get rid of that shit because I don't really want it on screen. Ah, it's good to be back. Uh, Super Adventure Box is a bit like Winter's Day for me, where I'm always astounded whenever the year's over and it's like a new year and suddenly I'm here. It's funny, last year I didn't really play much of the game. It was Super Adventure Box was the last thing I did last year. Really. I think I made content and videos about Super Adventure Box one year ago. And after that, I ended up on a huge, huge, huge break. Um... From, from the game and from making videos and stuff. I'm kind of on a semi-break at the moment, but obviously I've got a lot going on IRL and sort of a good reason for that, and that that's that's not going to last much longer anyway. I'm going to turn off post-processing here. Oh, no, no, no. It's it's just bloom I want gone, because it makes the ground look a lot better. Is it shaders? No, it's definitely not shaders. I still really want to look at uh, G-Shade and some of the new updates that you can... That, uh, and, and new shaders and things that have been added. Um... And I want to look at Blishard. So Revenge Box is one of those places as well where I used to spend a lot of time like tweaking the graphics, making it really look really good, making all these little like pixels on the floor and stuff pop. Uh, yeah, the other thing I want to do today is make sure 100% that I get my daily because that's where a lot of the AP comes from. In fact, now is a very good time for me to mess with Blishard because it will put all the overlays on on how to beat tribulation mode easily and stuff like that. Okay, the weekly trader as well I'll probably work on because exchange vouchers are good. Oh, you can get the Trader Generation 1 chest from this as well. The exchange vouchers are good because I, I still need so many um, trade contracts from Path of Fire to finish my Ascended Items set. 
Oh yeah, and then there's these weird items here as well. I'll tell you what, just as a comment to anyone, anyone watching live right now, anyone, um, uh, anyone in the comments in the future, there are a bunch of these uh, festival-based ascended trinkets, and they're all insanely expensive. And you would expect that ArenaNet would have hidden a cool visual effect on them or something. Um, or do anything, but there is nothing as far as I can tell. They're really weird. These set up alarm bells for me, though. I feel like there has to be something to do with these items. It's like the it's like the Rurik ring, you know? Um, it's like, I bet years later someone will find something about it. Do you know what uh, is, uh, I've also had my eye on. Oh, can I not open my bank in here? Uh, one of the Living World Season 4 maps, every Living World Season 4 map, right, has an accessory, an amulet, and a ring, except one. The first map, Istan doesn't have an amulet, I think it is, or or a trinket or something. It's missing one, and it's really weird. Because I'm getting this collection in my bank of everything, and I swear it's like, I think that there, there probably is one. It's just hidden on the map like the Rurik Signet Ring was from Ember Bay. But, uh, hey, may maybe not, maybe not. All right, uh, so yeah, nothing to look at there. Let's have a quick look here. I will get to looking at chats very soon, guys, sorry. Just an avalanche of things on my mind to talk about as we start off here. As always happens when I go away for a week or two. We have the mini adventure boxer. Is he new? What? How is that? How is that super adventure box related at all? Sorry, what? They're all super minis and then there's just a boxer. Just straight up a boxer. What? WP, I swear, if this is the rare occasion when you have clickbait in your title. Okay, look, I don't know. Apparently, they've got a preview for World 3. We're going to play it. We're going to see. I don't know what it is. I think that that title is perfectly justified because that's exactly what they have. And also, that's not clickbait. Having an enticing title that people are interested in clicking is not clickbait. Clickbait is when you have something completely unrelated to get people in, you know. It's a pun, boxer dog, because it's a super... I think that's awful. I th a pun does not justify this. This should just be a regular... It's a big mini, by the way. That's another thing I missed out on last year. All of the Jade Bot skins. I really want to get more of those, because I missed them all. I think... You know there's that Jade Bot skin of the, like, um... Oh, you can't see it, because we're in Super Adventure Box, and my back piece is disabled. But you see, I've got the, the, the little fire... The little, you know, the little fiery plume things. I think the perfect mini for this on this setup, all right... The perfect mini is the Jade Bot mini running the Candlewit Spike. Look at how good that is. That would work perfectly, right, with that backpack. But I don't own it. And I saw someone at the Pinata yesterday who had it, and I thought, wow, that's really good. Oh, another interesting thing that happened with the Gem Store is they have these noodle stands with multiple seats now, which essentially is a three-player co-op mount, technically, when you really get to it. So I wonder whether they'll do something for that. Okay, I don't know what we're doing. Do we just? How do we get there? How do we do it? If I go up to the door, can we just walk in? A note from Moto is attached to the door. Read it. Seeking skilled box enthusiasts to help debug a test zone. Qualified applicants inquire with Moto in Ratasoom. Sounds like Moto needs my help. Okay, so read the note on the World 3 entrance door inside the Super Adventure Box. So now we go back out and speak to him. Oh, maybe it's a good thing we were ranting and talking away for ages there. Because I sort of... I now have the impression this might be over in seconds. <laughs> Hopefully not. I, I, I'm really not trying to clickbait people. <laughs> Let's see what they've got, shall we? Um, but I had it in my head that we'd have to beat the whole box before we went in for some reason. Or we'd have to at least beat the uh, World World 2 or something. Or the last zone of World 2. Moto, where are you? Surrounded by players. There's no better time than the Super Adventure Festival to celebrate the Super Adventure Box. Your adventure awaits inside the box. I saw your note. Sign me up. I want to help test the box. Oh, I did write something like that. Yes, I'm sure you have the qualifications. Now, there are a few disclaimers before I can give you access to the test zone. Listen attentively. The test zone is not finished. and is. I like this. They can have a stand-in for the studio. And is not yet intended for progeny training. Challenge level, environment, holography, and achievable rewards are all a work in progress. No rewards. Well, I'm out. I'm an MMO player. Without the rewards, what's the point, right? 
uh, listen attentively. By participating in the test zone, you assume all liability and promise not to get mad at the Super Adventure Box staff if you fall into an endless abyss or drown in simulated water. I like this as well, because this is kind of... Well, I don't really... I don't know whether I like it, if it's intentional. But this is sort of like reminding the player base. The ravening player base screaming for World 3 constantly, like yours truly. The, all the little things they have to consider. But, I mean, it's not really an argument, is it? Not when it's been 10 years. Uh, I can agree to that. Very well. I've updated your box permissions. Congratulations on becoming a tester for the Super Adventure Box. Oh, I thought we'd have to do something. Thanks. I can't wait to try out the tester. Holy shit. So we can just walk in now, can we? We can just go into the... the that, that room is now open. Ooh. So my memories of it are, well, if you guys remember, there's that bonus zone. You beat the Storm Wizard, and there's the bonus zone where you fall into... But basically, the idea is it's underground, first of all. Okay, so you beat the Storm Wizard, you fall, you fall, you fall. Now, there's a bonus zone set here, let's say, where there's a bunch of, like, little burgling minor guys. Who go, and they, like, they, they take your baubles, and you beat the bonus zone. And nowadays, that just dumps you back to the hub. Which is not... Oh, yeah, the hub, which is represented on the map. It's so clever the way that they set all of this up, you know. Um, but w way back when, when there was the preview, the additional area... And again, this is in my Let's Play. I had to, like, find old videos and cut them together. I Basically, I have videos from when it originally happened. And then I have videos that I cut together for the Let's Play. And now we're talking about it again. Um, you, you were in, like, a giant cave area... Waterfalls flowing down everywhere. There really wasn't anything to do. But you walked up and then there was this djinn, like the, the game genie. It was a genie, you know, an actual like djinn creature. You spoke to it and then it started like breaking the fourth wall and suggesting that like... What did it suggest? It was something like the Super Adventure Box was becoming sentient or something. And then you, you it gave you this quest or achievement where you went back out into Ratasoom and you discovered like nefarious stuff about the creation of the box and they were doing like this thing that was spoofing like Sega versus um, Nintendo. And there was just all this cool stuff and there was a cool short story. Anyway, the, the, the map itself was very cool. I'm a sucker for water. My favorite zone is the, the rafting zone. And I just like rivers, I like lakes, I like rapids, I like rafts, I like canoes, I like waterfalls, shit like that in games. I like beaches. Water is just amazing. And to be honest, when I'm like out IRL, if you're going to go on like a nature walk, it's always best if there's a lake or a stream or a duck pond or something there, right? So anyway, um, I liked this because there was water everywhere. But that was it, really. I don't really remember anything else. And obviously, you can see from the theme of the building, like, that's a, a tree stump forest and stuff. This one's a log cabin, and there were log cab... I don't really know how that's representative of World 2. Anyway, this one looks underground, and the idea is you'd get three zones. One underground, two underground, three underground? My mouse is being weird. I don't know why. Jeez. And then, uh, and, then, and then World 4 is climbing up to the castle and stuff. So, let's see what they got. I'm expecting us to be underground. Reach out to seize your super adventure. You convince Moto to let you play in the test zone. It's not completely finished, but you're happy to help and see a new area. Fuck yeah, I am. I can't believe this is happening. This is a little bit like when I started. In oh, here you go. This is like the bonus zone. Ooh. This is um, a lot like when End of Dragons came out to me. Oh, my God. Already I'm more impressed than I was expecting. Okay, we fall. Okay, let's just be very clear. Let's make the game look as good as possible. Now, this environment zone intensity doesn't do seem to do anything. This is a weird slider because so far, this is a new option that got added to the game in a recent patch, right? Um, so far, I haven't seen this effect anywhere in the whole game except when doing Doom's throne room because we were doing Doom CM, um, which I'm happy to say I now have. As I mentioned a second ago, I've actually got all the raid stuff done finally. Um where it's reversed. In Doom's room, lowering the thing increases the intensity and raising the thing lowers the intensity. So I don't know what kind of spaghetti code nonsense that is. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to test that just in case. All right, so here we are. All right, well, well the music, the music. Let's see what the mu if they've got special music in it. Sorry, I haven't had music the whole video, have I? I think this is new, isn't it? Is this new? We gotta raise the effects volume. I mean, it's not—it's not especially flavorful, is it? 
I have to listen to it on my own. I do have a, uh, oh my god, this is weird to think about. For my videos, you know, sometimes I put Super Super Adventure Books music in the background. It's because I've got a playlist I made of all the SAB music, and I get to update that now. Wow. Alright, so, yeah, let's actually move, shall we? Campfire? Cave Sage. This is a test zone. Lord Vanquish conquered this land over ten years ago. And now the Choya... Oh, that's cool, because obviously the Choya weren't a thing when SAB first came out. Now the Choya are forced to mine ore for his armies. What's this campfire for? As you explore the test zone, you can use these campfires to update your checkpoint. You'll return to a campfire if you die or fall off a cliff. Oh, I wonder. Um, uh, so they've gone with a new checkpoint system here. I think I remember. Fuck. Okay, all right, another bit of news. About, about around 2020, again, 2020, 2021, Josh Foreman, one of the big, like, uh, original brains behind the Super Adventure Box, put a lot of work into it. Um, they did a stream, they let, they'd left the studio pre prior to that, but they, they did a live stream series, or one day or something. I, I watched it live when it was going on, I was there in chat. Uh, he basically went through and replayed the Super Adventure Box. And he talked about the, the what his plans had been for like this stage and stuff. It was a really good stream. If you guys can dig it out, I don't know where it is now. If you can dig it out, if there was a VOD anywhere, definitely. It's a good watch. It's a really good watch. What's particularly profound about it to me was he had forgotten so much. It was like, for him, Super Adventure Box was this distant memory where, you know, a lot of information was lacking. And it, just, it was one of those weird moments where I was like, man, even the creators of this thing are forgetting about it, they're moving on with their lives, and yet I'm not moving on with my life, I'm still talking about this fucking, <laughs> you know, this 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 area of this game, and, and now, you you know, when, the, when you've eclipsed knowledge-wise, it's kind of a weird thing. Anyway, um, he did talk about some of his plans for the future, and for some reason the idea that there'd be a new checkpoint system is ringing a bell for me. I feel like that's a weird choice, but I think it was the original idea, wasn't it? And maybe that, that nugget of info is in that live stream, maybe. Anyone in the live chat can round out this info, let me know. Uh, well, let other people know, so I'm not misinforming people. Okay, you'll return to campfires now. What if I run out of lives? Well, Dime with no lives sends you back here instead of to the checkpoint. You can buy more lives, lives from the coin machine. Oh, um, I do have an infinite coin. Look at this, by the way. Do you know I just said I took that break from Guild Wars after last year's Sab. Liz still has the items in her inventory. She still has the items. I haven't cleaned her inventory since then, properly. I mean, I've cleaned it pretty well. She actually doesn't have all the bags she needs now. The, a cool thing I've done is I've put in the slots up at the top, medallions. This is so useful for keeping your bag, uh, bags clear, guys. This is a hell of a technique. And you'll see I've got like 90 of them. Because these always escape like salvaging and selling junk and stuff. They're always a bit annoying. And they're kind of nice to keep because you can mystic forge them into amalgamated loads, uh, gemstones if you're lucky. Anyway, 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 anyway we're here for sub. So we get the Choya Miners. The Choya were added as well. You know, I don't want to be... I don't want to say that they've never added any um, content to Sab. They have done little achievements and stuff. And uh, the, the Choya did appear through, like, these weird glitched portal things that came in over the past couple of years. It's nice to actually see them in a map. They won't have been a part of the original concept, obviously, because the Choya weren't there. I like the textures. This is quite cool. Do you know what? This is obviously all a big nostalgia bait. This reminds me, one game I've been playing really recently is Banjo-Tooie. I've watched Let's Plays of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie years ago, but I started playing Tooie recently. And there's this, this um, like, Wild West mine map. Fuck, what's it called? Someone's going to know in the, in the live chat. Help me out here. There's a Wild West map. It's like the second zone you go to in Banjo-Tooie. And I got lost there. I spent ages. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Which I suppose is quite cool. Oh, God. Are, they, are there dig spots and everything? Oh, and all my binds are different now as well. It's F for the shovel. I'll have to get used to that. I mean, how much how much precision jumping should I do here? I do get the sense that this would be a bit of a nightmare to make, because you've got to think in advance of all the tribulation modes stuff. Like, this is probably the tribulation route. And then there's a suggestion of, well, do they want tribulation to be harder? As hard, or...? I mean, there's not really a curve to tribulation mode, is there? I mean, maybe the first couple of zones are easier, but the rest of them is pretty level. Okay. Is there any way I can climb up higher? I sort of feel like I can. I feel like I can get onto that ramp and go up there. 
but then that looks very work in progress and why would I want to do that? Let's have a quick look. If it feels like I'm being a bit tedious and slow, all right, do forgive me. I don't know when this is going to end. <laughs> Wait, how did I get up there? I totally made... Oh, no, I didn't make that jump. And you can do it because there's a bauble there. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. This is where we're meant to go. Ah, sneaky. And, you know, tedious and slow, maybe, but that is this is also kind of what SAB is. It's weird, isn't it? Because for years now, I think so many people, because this has become, like, itemized and rewards, you know, rewards are a big part of it now and doing the dailies. I feel like we've, a lot of us have just spent 10 years blasting through each zone with, you know, Taco or Blish Hut or whatever on. And now we've sort of forgotten what regular play is like, you know? This is totally a dick sport. Come on. Ah, uh, maybe eventually? Maybe, I mean, is this because it's a test zone? Well, we got the bauble. Oh, no, we didn't get the bauble. Oh, no, that was a bonus bauble we dug up with a shovel. I guess I could have jumped onto that, actually. All right, let's do that once more. Just because I'm, I'm curious if there's anything hidden up there. The other thing to think about as well with modern development of the Super Adventure Box is what kind of talent do they have that's really interested in, in jumping puzzles? You know, back when this first came out, there were a lot of really big, exciting jumping puzzles being made. You know, it was uh, there was the Mad King's Clock Tower, was like the big original one, but lots of Living World releases had them. You had the craziness of the, the Chalice of Tears was a bit later, obviously, but I still sort of think counts as that era. Um... But when you look now, what jumping puzzles did we really have in the Ice Brood Saga? A little one in Grothmar? That was basically... I mean, a lot of the little mini dungeons in Biora were very jumping puzzly. Drizzlewood kind of eased off on it. And then End of Dragons has some small ones, I suppose. But they're all a lot more simplistic, aren't they? So where would I go from here that's actually of any benefit at all? There's nothing I could climb on there. Oh, this is interesting. These are crystal things. We've been seeing these in the mini patches in the interim years. Oh man, I'm really interested in how this was made. Do you guys think that as soon as season one was done, they started working on this? Do you think this has been like semi-formed for years and years and years and they just decided, okay, let's give them a preview? Well, it looks like I've exhausted everything. I don't think there's anything else we can do here, guys. Unless digging on this, but I mean, the odds of that will... Oh, we created a bunny. Yeah, I don't think so. Alright, let's go on. Let's move on to the next area now. I don't know how much milling about here is worth anything when... Um... So I guess the question is, does the water hurt? It looks like that's gonna... Oh no, there's a bauble down there. Okay, so this is water like we see in World 1. Oh, and there's just a ramp to get out. Okay. Our first bauble of the... Oh no, no, no. Wait, did I not collect one above? Why have we only... Oh, because I used the uh, the slingshot. Hmm. Oh my god! Sorry, I was drinking coffee. Wow! Okay, that's cool. Oh, we're already doing underwater stuff. Okay. I thought... I was always curious how they were going to do underwater because there's this. But there's underwater stuff even in this level. Ah, now this is cool. Okay. I, I see what they've done as well. They're doing this like they did inside the worm. You know, the shortcut worm in World 1. Same sort of thing. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, my God. And it's got the low gravity. Oh, that's a good idea as well. <coughs> because we never saw that anywhere else in the Super Adventure books before. Oh, and I've been, I've been duped. How am I going to get that bauble now? Oh, I like this. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Low gravity, and it looks like you can maybe climb on some of this stuff. No? Oh, that's got to be death down there. Surely that's death. So let's try to actually do the platforming. Uh, I hope that in the final release, they change the music here. Because that's, that's, that's always a big thing of going underwater in these kinds of games, right? Like, you have to have the new music. Now, there's no breath meter, so obviously you're not going to do like a... I think the most iconic 90s retro gaming underwater music has to be from the Sonic series as you're running out of breath. And obviously we're not going to get anything as good as that. There's not even a mechanic to support it, but there should be. 
I think I'm gonna give up digging for chests soon, but that feels like that felt like a, a likely spot as well. You know, there's not many baubles around, and that either means that they've not had much time to put many baubles around, or it means um, this is actually a huge level. Like a ri or eventually will be a huge level. Okay, we got a bouncy pad. Can I just say that should not be a mushroom? That should be a shell. Shouldn't it? That should obviously be like a pink shell. You you jump on it and it springs you up. Oh, Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country does have some good music. That uh what's that what's that? Bramble bush. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Something about brambles. There's a really good song from Donkey Kong Country. All right, well, we're up. Holy shit, where are we now, though? I'm becoming more impressed since seeing that underwater thing. Hmm. And obviously, we can't jump high anymore. That's nice. So they have certain areas of the map you can jump high, certain areas you can't. Okay, a couple of spiders. Spiders work well as enemies here. Oh, okay, let's think as well. Hold on, real quick. Okay, they're both dead. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, minis. Super. So the bananas we've seen. The raccoons we've seen. They're the bosses. The spiders we just fought. Monkeys we've seen. Piranhas we've seen. They jump out of the water in the rapids level. The frogs we've seen. The yeti we've seen. The goats we've seen. The bunny we've seen. The bee dog. The snake. The turtles, the angry clouds. Now, Gord in the he, race, he's in the hub. We've seen that. The super ooze. Well, we have seen the, the ooze. The ooze is the new achievements you get where you collect and deliver the ooze. The storm wizard we've seen. The miners we're now seeing. They're new. Okay, so there's not actually... I got the... For some reason, I had a weird feeling that there were more like preview enemies. That You know, in the hub world, guys, there's that parade that marches around in a circle out there. There's not any like hints ahead, are there, in that parade? Why do I feel like there are some enemies? Because that's obviously got to be a big thing as well. I don't want to see entirely reused enemies. The music's grown on me, by the way. Oh, can we go in there? No, I wonder if that's a, a test zone thing. The other thing to think about, guys, with this, is, in terms of like having a huge map, is uh, think about how unbelievably, insanely complex the World 2 zones got. And in particular, you know, the, the Cool Cool Mountain or whatever, whatever it's called, Snowy Mountain. That is mental. How Think about all those hidden rooms nestled in the, the, the rocks, getting that achievement for all the baubles, the number of places you have to go. Basically, all those World 2 levels are like two levels in one, really. And I, I've actually always advocated for them just splitting those in half. So it's weird to think that, oh, I mean, what is ArenaNet's mindset here? Are they going to match that complexity or are they going to rein it back? Are they going to find a sweet spot between World 1 and to. Because if this map is like that mountain map, except it's all underground, I mean, this is going to be a hell of a labyrinth. This is going to be mental to explore. Be like tangled depths of the super adventure box. And I'm not, I don't even know whether I'm advocating for that, by the way, because that might just be crazy. Nothing up there. So far, all the weird little tricky, sneaky areas have had nothing. Which, again, m might be good, might not, I don't know. Because it's hard for me to be objective about that shit as well. Because, you know, it's been years. It's been years. I can't fully remember. I, I mean, I remember being frustrated in a good way by, like, tribulation mode and stuff. But I can't really remember my very first playthrough of World 2. I do know. I mean, okay, so the other story for those out of the loop. Those, those n n you know, let's imagine that everyone watching this came from the Steam launch or something. Um, people who missed out on it back in the day. You know, there's been a lot of moments over the years where I've really felt disheartened by the community and felt at odds with the community and, like, I don't get the community. Uh, and Super Adventure Box Back to School was one of those moments because it was reviewed badly. People really didn't like World 2 because it got so big and complex and Infantile Mode didn't really resolve that for them. Uh, so, you know, there is a, such a thing as going too far. To me, I just looked at it as like, wow, look at all the content here. As someone who loves the game, as someone who plays the game, as someone who was given skills on how to jump and explore and conditioned by the first world and by, 
you know, whatever other jumping puzzles are in the game. As someone dedicated to Guild Wars and into Guild Wars, I loved World 2 and I couldn't possibly imagine complaining that it was too much. But the fact is the vast majority of people, as far as I remember, and I, I don't mean to rewrite history here, if I'm wrong, let me know, uh, was people really bitched about it. And, and there is kind of a theory out there that the reason... That was a lot harder of a jump than I thought it was going to be. Um, there is a bit of a theory out there that the reason Super Adventure Box went away and they stopped actually advocating for updates for it was because of that negative reaction. Was because they put a lot of work in and then people had sort of, you know, shoved their middle fingers in their faces. So, uh, you know, and I don't know how much merit there is to that, really. I think it's more likely that they just went all, on, all hands on deck to finish Season 2 and get Hearthorns out the door. And then the question becomes, why wasn't it picked back up at the Season 3 era? And that might be because they were doing in tandem uh, an expansion and Season 3 together. And then the question becomes, why didn't they pick it back up in the Season 4 era? And it was probably because they were making another game. And then the question becomes, during the Ice Brood Saga, and it was probably because they... Uh, you know, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, I did just notice here... We got something. Something about hidden baubles. So it looks like we have an objective, guys. This is quite good. Uh, why am I so stupid? Okay, festivals. Tester of secrets, under three. Find all the green baubles in world three test zone. Now, I believe that that first bauble was the one, the, the, the water trap. Oh, we get a mini. Uh, a bauble mini, that's weird. That's very strange. I thought that was gonna be some kind of rock creature. Oh, you know what we should wear? We should wear the reality rig thing that makes baubles and monkeys and things appear in the overworld. Okay, so let's do this then. Let's pin that. Let's pin that one. This says just complete the test zone. Documenter of secrets and red baubles. Okay, so we're looking for three red baubles and we're looking for eight green ones. Now, if anyone wants to give advice in the live chat as we go... I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not a big believer that backseating is the worst thing in the world or whatever, so you guys can totally do it. Okay, so we've got a campsite there. So is that checkpoint two? I feel weird because there was another way to go through the zone if we had just... If we hadn't got caught in the water. Is that the start again? I think that's the start down there. Let's do a quick little jump dodge. Yeah, and that's the green bauble. That's a trap, though. Okay, so we haven't actually gone that far. Oh, the fact that there's a bunch of baubles to go for gives me the distinct feeling now that it's like a proper level. Okay, la, 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 la. we're going to sneakily... I don't know if this is what ArenaNet imagines we should do, but I am going to... Oh, it's in the middle. Oh, very sneaky. I like it. Okay. Ready? All right, we got it. Nice. And which one was that? Was that one? It was one. So there's two and three. Assuming that they're in order, that means that this is a bit... I mean, do you guys do you guys suppose that maybe down there there is a... Is it safe down there and there are baubles? What do we think? I mean, that would be really... That would be very cheesy and trolly, but that's like right up Super Adventure Box's alley, isn't it? Are you calling me a cheater, Caesar? <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's just it's just game mechanics <laughs> at that point. Uh, sorry, you joined late. Is World 3 officially coming? I mean, yeah, the, look. People have this weird impression that the studio are full of liars, blah, 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 blah. I think that's unfair. I think it was always clear that World 3 was coming. They said as well. I mean, they did say, you know, it's just that things take time. Or don't go, ideally. Okay, so that, to me, looks like a yellow bauble. How we didn't get it before, I don't know. There is no achievement for yellow baubles. But it might be a hidden achievement, but I doubt it because we don't have any red ones yet, and that's there. So let's land. So that's really weird. Do you guys think that that's unpick -upable? Or maybe I need to land on the platform but not on the mushroom and then, like, grind my way against the side as I jump up. That's a thought. This is a funny kind of video to do because I feel very much like if I were watching this and I was a Super Adventure Box fan or a Guild Wars fan or something, I would probably turn this on, see two seconds of WP in a genuine new world and then just leave to go play it myself. <laughs> 
I'm hoping that chat isn't filled with people who beat it because you can do it in two seconds. But that might be the case. I mean, the patch is very new right now, really. I mean, I only spent about, what, 20 minutes in, in finishing my fractals before coming in? Ooh. There is another thing here, by the way. Maybe we can use bombs to open up places. Oh, I shouldn't have done the big bomb. And I'm a bit scared of doing that, though, because I don't have much currency. Because I never, like, refilled. Have you tried bombing things? Yeah, exactly, I haven't. I, I haven't seen any cracks on any walls. Maybe I should have. I tried using a slingshot, but I kind of got into the mindset very quickly that, oh, it's work in progress, so that kind of stuff's not there. And possibly that was wrong with me. I'm going to stay up this time. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. There's a pile of boulders there. So let's see. Okay, so let's just get our heads straight. What we would do... This is cool. I like this. Oh, this reminds me of, uh, guys, I, I, last summer, I was so close to doing a series with Boots about this. Last summer, I, I got really into modded Minecraft. And some of the generation in the new game versions for the mines and the caves and stuff is fucking mental. It's so good looking. And I just had a little moment of that there. All right, to get into our headspace, right? We, we, we cross the water. We get the green bauble there. It doesn't look like there's any more hidden. There could be one in there, but I doubt it. There's nothing under that ramp, so all we would have done, the conventional way, if we don't go in the water, we're about five seconds into the level, frankly, uh, we would just come up that ramp and then we're here. That's it, that's the whole story. So let's keep going. And jump across this. I don't know why that thing there makes me think of Minecraft. I've got quite a few anecdotes about other games at the moment. You know, the other thing that I've played a little bit of, by that I mean about four hours, and all week I've been meaning to get back to it this week. But I've, I've just had very little time to play games this week. Uh, it's an old game. It's a big RPG. It's an RPG I should have played years ago. It's an RPG that I can clearly see has influenced Guild Wars 2 in a major way. Okay, in fact, it's redefined how I think about Guild Wars 2 and what ArenaNet were doing in 2009, 10, 11 as they were making this game. Okay, it's clearly a huge influence on Guild Wars 2. You can't play it without instantly noticing it. Um, and it's a series, it's a massive RPG series that I've never talked about, that I've never played, but I'm totally in love with. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's, no, it's not Mass Effect, but it, you're very close. I, play, I played Mass Effect a long time ago. It's Dragon Age. Dragon Age Origi Origins. I don't really, didn't really know much about Dragon Age, but I've been playing, I've played about four hours of Origins. And, uh, oh my god. Everything about the start of that game. So I played an elf from the city so I had this story where the humans like stole my wife and you know it was it was it was crazy right but it basically the way that that game is structured is how the personal story is structured you can literally see you can literally see that devs at ArenaNet played Dragon Age Origins and the timeline lines up Origins came out in like 2009 Guild Wars 2 came out three years later you can say so obviously that ArenaNet played Dragon Age Origins and they were like, this is cool, we want to recapture this. Down to, like, the sound effects of the dogs barking is how areas of Divinity's Reach sound. Like, the currencies with the gold, the silver, and bronze and stuff. The, the, the structure of the personal story and the structure of the beginning of Dragon Age Origins. I mean, it is so, so transparent. And I don't say that as a bad thing, by the way. It's just I've learned a little bit more about where Guild Wars 2 came from from playing that game. And, uh, yeah, holy shit, the lore is cool. I love this whole thing about the, um... Oh, God, what's it called? The Blight? Is it called the Blight? The Dark? The, the something? Anyway, these, like, angels go to heaven to, like, try and win it for themselves. These people go to heaven, like, lose a fight against angels or something and come back as these demons that... And these, like, elder gods that are dragons. Uh, even, like, the, the colour of the game, you know, like, the white and red logo with the big dragon on it and stuff. Like, that's so what Guild Wars went with, with its aesthetic. It's crazy. Oh, this is cool. Sorry, I'm a mile away thinking about different things here. So platforms can appear. Oh, and go away. And then we fall and die. Ugh. Rapid mechanics look like they're the same as in the, uh, the raft zone. Oh, and I'm dead. Did I just start with low health here, did I? Mm. Yeah, so I'm very, very intrigued by Dragon Age at the moment. And I, I do, I, I want to get back into it and play more of it. Um, I actually really like the combat as well. I was, you know, I get a bit put off going into big RPGs where they have like really tight controls and they're very action 
oriented and you've got to block or dodge or parry at the right time, you know. But this is a very kind of hands-off strategy kind of party-based combat that is really like... It's much more about the strategy and the tactics of the thing than anything else. And I found that really, really cool. I'm enjoying the gameplay. I'm enjoying the lore. I, I, anyone that wants to know exactly where I am, I just met Morrigan. It took me about four hours to get there. I've joined the Grey Wardens, and that's about where I am. And I know that she's like one of these big famous characters in gaming, and I guess I'll learn why. <clears throat> okay, so we strike the crystal. These, again, these were mechanics in the achievements. You strike the crystal, and it does a thing. It creates a platform. So for me, it looks like these are on timers. This is really cool. I like the, the sort of water plume effect. But the middle one, I triggered the timer, so... I just, I'm really scared I've missed stuff. Oh, I am! Look, look, there's a green bauble right there! Ooh! Hold on. But how would we... Oh, it looks like... Oh, this is good. Okay, wait, 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 there's a real puzzle here. Ah, I know, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. We come here. This is good, genuinely. Come here. Oh. This is actual puzzle platforming here. You read the environment, you try to figure out the route, you have the dexterity to execute it. I'm going to jump dodge or try and fail. I was going to say, not that I think you need to, but with that, we can get up here. And with that... See, the, the, the thing that must be a real bitch about designing tribulation areas, um, the, the super adventure books areas, is you've got to create alternate routes for secrets, but then also alternate routes for tribulation. You don't want them all to be the same alternate route, really, do you? Okay, and then I think we can, I don't think this is a tricky jump. I think we can just drop. Got to be a little bit careful of secrets within secrets. I can't believe I'm playing World 3 right now. This is really bizarre. I can't believe that they've just put this out here. I'm also a little bit disappointed by the spuds in guild chat earlier. Because I said, oh my god. When I read that patch note, I said in guild chat, oh my god. Is World 3 in? And is it a test zone or whatever? And I, I got a few like really understated responses of people just saying, yeah, it's a test. Yeah, that's it. And like there was no screaming or anything. There was no like super enthusiasm. So I came into this here thinking it would be much shorter than this and much less on the new assets and stuff. Okay, so there we go. We get the green bauble. Nice. I guess these will become legacy achievements eventually, guys. Right, let's clip the camera through to see if there's any hidden doorways or anything. I don't think there is. Probably. Probably not. All right, so with that done, again, we could dig and we could blast all the walls. To be honest, I was never all about that anyway. Being here has also afforded us this ramp. So this essentially is an entirely alternate route. I almost wonder whether what Arena should do is just make World 3 and 4 all six zones do them in order sans trib we'll just deal with trib later if ever you know if that makes it easier i don't know though i'm only speculating into what would make things harder i mean the other mode infantile mode doesn't really have uh any major complications so why do they let me come all the way up here if there's nothing going on up here I shouldn't say infantile mode either, should I really? They've just renamed it. There's a thread that, as far as I'm concerned, is a bit ridiculous. But there's a thread on the forums that of someone saying that they're insulted by the use of the phrase infantile. You know, that's the world we live in. You know, they're having a, it, it's a silly little fun... I mean, there's a whole discussion on it on the on the forums, but uh, ArenaNet, uh, I, I think it's already renamed now. I think it's just called Easy Mode. I think if they're going to rename... Someone has a very good point on there that it doesn't really... It's, if you're going to rename that, then they should rename Tribulation as well to just hard, you know, and just take all the flavour out of it, because that's all you're doing, really. But, yeah. So... This just loops me around onto the beam I, I'd already got to. Oh, I see. So that's why we come here. Okay, I see. This is actually the main route. I thought that this was all an optional bonus path, so we go down there now. There is the question of that. I mean, I could go left, couldn't I? 
That's a hell of a jump, though. Oh, no, I bet we have to go up more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, we, we just go up more, and then we go that in that other direction. All right, let's not miss our train. Quick, 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 quick. All right. Three snakes. I'm a little disappointed if snakes end up the final enemy. I, I, I You know, snakes are very world one-y to me. You know, they're not even a new color of snake, are they? Actually, they're a little bit tankier. Maybe they're, they're tankier snakes, but... I don't know, and monkeys as well. I don't, I don't want to be seeing these enemies when I'm underground. I said this back when Path of Fire came out in celebration, but you know, when Path of Fire came out and we first met the Choya and the Sand Sharks and the Jin and the Hydra, you know, a big thing for me in these games, whether it's Sab or just Guild Wars in general, it's exploration. I really want good fun exploration and a huge part, unfortunately, because I know it's expensive and difficult to do, a huge part of what makes exploration fun is new enemies. So, I would hope that eventually we get lots of new stuff here. Oh! Oh, look at that! There is sort of a secret route through there. Sort of. Actually, that's not to my benefit at all, is it? You know that disclaimer that we had to accept when we started playing this? Saying, you know, if there are world holes or whatever, we get stuck in infinite loops of death. It's not our fault. That's weird to me. I sort of thought that they had automated ways of detecting that kind of stuff. I was sure they did, because you can't go over an enti the entire game with a fine tooth comb like that, can you? Maybe there are certain like sore spots or special little areas that that doesn't count for. Alright, let's get through this room again. Oh, by the way, that green bauble we got, that's five. I think I've missed two. I'm happy to keep going though and complete the level because if the two that we've missed are that early then we can pick them up. We can find wherever they're hidden, especially with some advice from people in chat, of which there may be even more accurate advice by the time we've beaten the level, as you guys yourselves have, have beaten and found stuff. See that there, that feels like there should be a secret through there, but there's not. And then that other waterfall just took me in the wrong way. I guess it's because we jumped through high up is what they want me to do, maybe? And yeah, it won't be too hard for us to just restart the level and pick up those early ones. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied that that's the lot there. That's interesting. Do you think there's any reason to jump onto that? I'm going to go for it. No, there's no reason to jump onto it. Damn it. Well, hold on. Maybe we can jump back through over here. No, no, no. The price of expiration. We got to do the whole thing again. You're in six out of eight. Oh wow, you're doing pretty well then. <clears throat> Were the two you missed by any chance the ones that I missed? Nice. Just about made that. Don't go down. Don't go down. Don't get ah. There, I kind of had this instinctive feeling that was going to go well because I got the timing on that. This one's going to be tight again. Oh, what? Come on, I'm in the air above it. I jumped. Yeah, it still managed to grab and CC me. Come on. I know if I'd just been a little bit patient the first time, that would not have been an issue at all, but hey. <laughs> right. No, you idiot! Oh, I forgot. I forgot that that one goes up and down. This room is proving to be... Very tricky. You're missing number two and number seven. But that's interesting because I'm missing number two as well. And I'm, according to the list, it looks like I'm quite close to number seven. So it's around now. I want to start keeping my eye out because there's the possibility I've already missed six. Oh, unfortunately, I always hate it when achievements do this. This kind of gives me a sense of how long the zone is. If we've already got five and there's only eight, we may only have a couple more chambers to explore, guys. I always have this weird moment with, mo with with stuff like this where, you know, I feel like it's been really long and I've been having lots and lots of fun, but as soon as I see the end, as soon as I see the, the conclusion, suddenly the whole thing felt like it was too short. <laughs> Anyone else ever get that? It makes it very hard to attempt to objectively review whether a thing is too long or too short or whatever. 
Okay, so... There's a big chest there. I guess that's what people just talked about in chat. Now... It seems to me that the obvious route is over here. And to jump down onto that. It seems to me... Therefore... That getting this chest is the game we want to play. And hopefully we can come back. This feels again like a good dig spot. Apparently not. Oh, well, there's no way up though. Hmm. Maybe we can, I mean, that there though. That looks like it frames a door that you could bomb open, doesn't it? It really looks like that should open a door and then maybe there'd be one up there or something. How do you get to that chest then? Well, there's that beam over there. Okay, I think we get to it from the other way. We need to stay high. We want to get onto that beam. Because that jump there under my cursor, that looks like that's not too high that we wouldn't be able to make it. So then what was the point of this? Was there a bubble there? There wasn't anything hidden there. So why have this section? There must be a purpose to it. Alright. I'm going to let that go down and then I'm going to let it come up twice. Because if I was really sneaky, I would have it on like a double pulse thing. You know, where it goes up, down, up, down, up, down really quick. And then if you're on the wrong, if you're not, if you're on the talk, not the tick, then you get screwed. Yeah, it looks like it's just pretty much up and down. Okay. Now I think this is one of those one night and one. I was gonna say by jumping. Oh, oh, oh! Don't want to get knocked off. You could take fall damage when you, which would knock you down, which would make it worse. So you just falling is better. You know they have a moment like that even in like the Mad King's Clock Tower. More monkeys. Okay, that green bauble was unbelievably easy. That's six. Okay, so we've got seven and eight to find. I feel like jumping down some of these holes is, instead of killing you, going to take you somewhere. Look at that giant crystal there as well. That's cool. Hmm. This is quite linear, isn't it? Um, a lot of the uh, the impression I got from the, the preview of this world years ago was that it'd be quite open. But I guess that's a stupid thing for me to think, because since when were any Super Adventure Book zones truly like that? I mean, the, the ninja zone can kind of feel that way. Alright, so campsite, um, but possibly the last campsite? Possibly? I suppose there's a chance that the level's really long and it's just they only the eight baubles only spread the first fifty percent or something. I'd like it to be darker as well. I don't know. I was expecting the underground level to be like you know um, at the start of Zone Two where you go into the dark woods. I was expecting not the entire zone to be constantly really dark because that would be aggravating to people and, you know, people have low tolerance for stuff like that. But lots of sections like that, you know, lots of dark areas, shrouded places. Like that's a regular occurrence. Instead of just the once in the, in the forest, you'd actually have lots of little pockets of it. And yet there's been none of that. I, I kind of like from a broad perspective as well. Imagine that all of Super Adventure Box has been implemented, all of it. I kind of like what that would then do to Zone 2. It's like a little tease as to what the game will become like later. You know, many, many zones later. Okay. And also, you know, there's, there is a whole item upgrade class. The torches and stuff. Oh, I wonder if... The, do you guys think there's a chance they put any upgrades in this? Because it's funny. Despite the fact there's been no zones to play, there have been upgrades that have come in over the years. Again, to continue relentlessly plugging my stuff, because I'm not making enough new stuff right now. Uh, if you watch my playthrough, uh, I, I sort of go through those all in order. I actually, guys, I still have on my hard drive, like, two more Super Adventure Box videos about blue coins and stuff that I still haven't uploaded. 
because it really it just crushes me whenever I try to upload a video like that nobody really cares or watches it and that's fine but I'm like oh god I've got these videos going up that just no one's watching so then they just stay on my hard drive I think they've been available to people on Patreon for years and years and years but so <laughs> they were always meant to be like uploaded on a one year lag and I think it's been like three years now um god I feel like I'm moving too fast here this is uh, giving me Crash Bandicoot vibes here. Those levels on the narrow bridges. Okay, come over it. I suppose that's a lot like the uh, the bridge in uh, the Rapids level as well, you know, where the ninjas charge at you. You're supposed to get like a speedy power up and then you run along. And I think that's kind of referential to Super Mario, you know, where you hold B and you can skip over tiny little jumps. Oh god, I'm moving too fast. I can just tell that I'm moving too fast. Let me just remember, remind myself. Do you know what? I found zero red ones. <laughs> Clearly some stuff's well hidden here. This is good. This is exactly what the old Super Adventure Box updates will be like. People will play it casually and then they will go to the wiki or they will hear from their friends. Or they'll get their add-on or whatever guide they choose and they will uh, and then they'll just follow the guide to get the other stuff <laughs> in fact I don't know why I say for two prevention books that's just most of Guild Wars to be honest so there's a green one there now if I could get onto this stuff okay there's a chance that I need to jump onto this and then I hop onto that and that over there or up these that gets me onto this. Maybe that's the only way onto this. And from this vantage, I can clearly clamber up here, along, and get the green. Well, no, I can't, I can't jump up that. I would go along like this, onto this, and get the green. There's, it's a lot of platforming for the green, but it's obvious. Oh my god, there's one right fucking there! Oh god, what do they want me to do there? A banana jump? Oh, that is sneaky, isn't it? That's a very cool jump, because that does not look particularly easy. I think you're going to be tempted to jump dodge from here, but probably the best is there. I reckon that's actually right. You know, when you get a surface like this in Super Adventure Box, where there's that, like, diagonal corner, usually they tend to be really sticky, and they're good to land on when, you know, and it's not so bad. Of course, I haven't played the Super Adventure Box for a year. We could examine this side as well. Where jumping around that feels okay. But the thing is, because this juts out a bit more, I feel like that's specifically done to make that impossible, question mark? Harder, at least. But that looks like a really easy jump as well, actually. I think the one that I'm going to go for is this one. Ooh, oh, oh, no, it did not have the traction that I thought it was going to have. Oh, we might be dead here. Does dodging CC me? No. Jumping CCs me, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, we're dead. We're dead! No! 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 Oh. oh wow, it killed me so fast. Alright. We only have 33 lives left, guys. Careful now. Hmm. Alright, well, look, we, we sort of spammed our way through this area anyway. Oh, I feel like there's going to be a red one here somewhere. Oh, I love the way that they did this. This is, this is not insubstantive. This is pretty big. And they just threw it out there. They just did it. Very cool. Okay, wait, hold on. Why am I talking about all that shit when I can just do this? Oh, because I can't just do that. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Okay, and that, that was the previous transition room. Okay. So we really don't have a choice here except to cross this bridge. I mean, there's a blue bauble there. Interesting they never did a blue bauble achievement, since that's, that's what most worlds have. Oh, do they do, do most worlds, do the worlds have red and green bauble achievements, but no yellow one? A new world, you guess you're coming back to Guild Wars 2? Indeed, yeah. I mean, it is just a preview, so I can't remember what I, I got accused of clickbait a minute ago. I can't remember what I've got in the title of the video. I did say preview, didn't I? Or test or something? Or did I just put that in the description? Now, if I make this jump... No, there's nothing I can do there. 
It's weird, it's so big and open here, and yet there's actually very little you can do. Sorry, I'm looking down here at the moment. Doesn't realize anything. Okay, so, hold on. So that jump was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It didn't even feel close. So let's try this jump. Okay, that jump was better for me. Anyone wants my advice? Do that one. And you can hold the camera really easily for that one as well. Okay, so good. So we get this green. So that's green 8. So that one's going to be green 7. So, so basically, I've got all the greens. The end of the level, guys, must be up there somewhere. Oh, do you know what? One of the red baubles is probably in that chest we saw. Probably that chest has one of the red ones. So we missed two greens at the start, basically. Assuming I can get to this, but it's 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 there, so I mean, I think we'll be alright. I'm a little bit nervous about the fact there's lots more climbing that looks possible over there as well. But there's no way up to it. Now, I will say as well, I'll try and do this as best as I can in this video, but uh, if it's bombing and digging, I mean, those are pretty, you know, especially in some of the World 2 stuff, they're pretty rough to try and get on your own, so I don't think I'll bog it down too much with that. Okay, oozes. But hold on, there's not an ooze collection achievement, is there? So these are just regular ass oozes fighting us, that's quite cool. I like this thing with the, uh, the lantern falling on the floor. I feel like there need to be more colours for the crystals. Or something. Maybe the whole idea is red. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I've skipped it already. We, we've got to go back now. Oh, fuck. Oh, I can't believe you've done this. Oh. Oh, why did I do that? I should have... It's alright, I think we'll <laughs> I think we'll make it at least here. Uh, come on, Liz. You can make it. Come on! I'm thinking of changing Liz's Ah, oh, I can't believe it. I'm thinking of changing Liz's title. Oh, it doesn't even take a life, it just takes hearts if I remember really. Of changing her title. She's had Gram for ages, but I've really started multi-classing a lot lately. And um you know, my Mesmer is actually the Guild Wars 1 character. I was a Mesmer in Guild Wars 1. The Mesmer is the first character I made on this game. So if I'm gonna have a character represent Gwam, then it should be the Mesmer. Usually I just like match the title to the theme of the character. But now I have two God walking amongst my mortals and I don't know, I feel like it's sort of... I think Liz should have something else, but I don't know what else I'd put on her. On my Rev, I've been repping Voidwalker because that's the character that... Oh, I just did it again. Oh my Lord, dude. Well, mind you, hold on. What is the meaning behind you, Mr. Monkey? Just to throw coconuts? But I don't really know what I've done that's special on this, you know? I mean, I don't remember who I got danced with demons with or any of that other stuff. I don't know. Maybe I should just find a good asura -y or elementally one. Alright, well, whatever. The one thing Sab never does, right, is... Do you know what? We've got half a heart here. And I can tell what's going to happen. We're going to land on that. The monkey's going to hit us and we're going to die. So actually, what I'm going to do is jump over. Which will full heal us. Because that's actually going to take a life away. And <laughs> now we're not going to have that problem. Um, yeah, they, the sap doesn't do a thing where you kill all enemies in the zone, does it? I don't think he's ever had that. I assume because it's sort of tricky to implement, maybe. Because you can spawn enemies at any time through digging. And maybe that would mess with the counter and so I mean, you could just flag dug up enemies as not counting, right? I'm very flag oriented now when I think about how things might be coded because like the paradox uh, coding language <laughs> is all about flags. Just flags, 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 flags. Okay, so we could do that. We could have jumped over to that platform with that monkey and I'm wondering whether that would be beneficial in any way. I wonder if hidden back there, you know? I'm gonna guess no for now. It'd be cool if there was a hidden achievement for killing all the monkeys. Alright, so now we can do this, and we have to be very careful not to fall all the way down. And again, we have to be, yeah, on here. Okay, so now this opens up the green. Nice. 
Do you know what? I was actually going to use action cam there to specifically aim. Because it does work. Oh, no, it doesn't work on this. It works uh, It works in other areas of the game. Uh, all right, so the monkey's dead. The question is, do we jump to this to get to that? Or just straight? I think we just go straight away with a jump dodge. Hold on, though. That's not high enough. It's not high enough. I mean, maybe a jump dodge? Oh! Oh, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. We go this way. You know, I do think that jump dodge that I just attempted is possible. I think if you get that pixel perfect, that would land. Hey! Oh! Ooh! Oh, cool. All right, this is the first really cool room that we found, I think. Except that underwater section. That was a cool little preview as well. Oh, shit. Okay, so wait. But what's the me what's the way forwards? The actual is this the actual way forward? I feel like this is going to be housing a red. There's got to be a red hidden here, right? A green teases us. And the red finishes us off. Around the corner. Did that a little bit blind there, but you know, sometimes sometimes messing around with the camera too much, you're just overcomplicating things. Uh, can I just say as well, thanks to everyone who found this video and who was actually watching this. I know it's a bit sappy or whatever, and oh my god, a news found me. Uh, but yeah, uh, I feel like I, I've been so inconsistent with stuff for so long lately that I do just feel like I want to say thank you to everyone. And uh, once this move is over, we'll be back onto the game plan. Um, okay, so an ooze came at me from where, though? Is it, like, really sneaky we have to jump up? No? What is this afforded us? Okay, so we came out here, right? So that means I can jump to this now. And maybe we go back through the waterfall. That's the only thing I can imagine this has afforded us. Why the ground here is like this is a bit weird. Is, does that mean that this is a bomb spot? It is weird here, isn't it? The ground. Let's place a bomb. No. Let's dig, I guess. No. I don't suppose throwing a bomb over there creates a thing. No. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this. Ooh, maybe I should have gone for a jump dodge there. That was trickier than I thought. Okay, so we went in there. We've come out here, and uh, now we can go over there. Hold on, though. What? But I could have just... Oh, I guess just for this bauble? A, a single blue bauble? That whole room for one blue bauble? Because I assume I could... I could just scramble up that if I wanted to come up here, couldn't I? I don't know, and I don't want to test it. Oh, does this take me to the beam? Is this back in the previous room and we can get the beam? Oh, there's a yellow. Hold on, I'm not misreading it. The yellows aren't reds, are they? No, no, no. The yellows aren't reds. Fuck. Wait, no. This is like the way forwards, I guess. Is it the way forwards? Oh, I'm really nervous. Because what is the point of that huge fucking room? Is this all an extension of that huge fucking room? Or are we back on normal... Sorry, guys. We've got to do it. We've got to know. We've got to know. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here... And we're going to climb down, and we're just going to be sure. Oh! Oh, actually, I'll tell you what. It is a part of the huge fucking room. Because that's not possible. Right? You can't scramble up that. In fact, you can't even really easily get on it from... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You probably can easily get on it. Like that. And then... I mean, this feels weird. This feels... For for the first time, truly work in progress. Well, okay, so I'm going to assume that that's not possible. In which case, this is only possible from this, which is only possible from going through the room. So that is the big room. 
So then the question becomes, well, what's the way forwards? What's the actual way? It's all the way forwards. But that's green, so that's a bonus. Also, this beam over here. When are we going to get back onto that? Because... Well, it, I mean, that's not possible from here. That's not possible. You're not a sneaky way through, are you? No? Maybe it's from much higher up. Maybe I just need to keep going. Maybe I'm overcomplicating this. Or maybe we missed something back in the, this chamber. Interesting. You go on the beam after you do the big room. And what comes after it. No, you didn't play it yet, but that's the most logical thing. Well, only if you're 100% confident that you didn't miss anything in the more likely location, which is here. Because I just, I going to that new place has kind of given me the weird sense that we're moving further away. Because I thought it was, I thought exactly what you just said. I thought we were going to loop back, but higher up. But I mean, it seems so close, you know. There's also, remember in the ice levels, there's like the stalactites that you could shoot things at and they'd fall down. I don't know whether any of that's hidden in here. Probably not. All right, well, let's let's put a pin in it again then and let's just go back through the big room. But where's the way forwards? Let's assume I'm... Oh, 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 I, I think I know. I think I know. Assuming I don't do that whole green gauntlet. Wow, that was such, that's such a huge route though as well. It's a weird thought. Okay, just to be clear as well, there's nothing behind the monkey. That's good. You survive this time, Mr. Monkey. Yeah, I guess what this map is missing is power-ups. There's no barrels, there's no speed boosts, rage moments. I actually think that, like, and the stealth, I think that those elements of the Super Adventure books are really cool, and they, the devs could do a lot of fun things with in the last few worlds. Hopefully they've got them on their mind. So yeah, going over there feels like that will double me back to the beam, and I'll be alright. We're going to go in here, though, and see this whole optional place. I can't believe how... I mean, look at this. This is the start of the optional route here. It's quite crazy, if you think about it. And I really should have been more cognizant of that fact when I just jumped down here. I mean, that just feels so close, yet so far, you know, I guess. All right, so... Here I did the jump dodge. Here it didn't matter. That first jump dodge probably doesn't matter either. I, I, I do get it. Okay, now we walk through here. I mean, this is a cool room, but on the other hand, there were rooms just like this in World 2. Oh my god, I really played that very risky. <laughs> I went way too far out there. Oh god, it all feels a bit floaty. I've got that thing where suddenly I'm a bit nervous and like overly analysing every jump. Okay. So we're back. And incredibly, I do think that that's all necessary. So what the hell is this place? I, I, I'm thinking this has got to lead us to a red. Surely. One red in here, and then maybe one in that, that other chest. Okay, so there's nothing... Nothing here. Okay, so we can... Fucking hell, if I fall, it's a long way home. They got a nice ambient music in here, by the way. Sneaky, tricky little jump there. Oh god, why do I feel so off about this? Let's do it diagonally, so we get a bit more space for that. This is good. This, it feels like we're in the big boy area here. Alright. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, it's because it's very narrow, you know, so we want to back up a bit more, I think. Holy shit. Why do my fingers feel so heavy? No! Why did I do that? Oh, I feel like that was...
was the last one. I had just a couple of jumps. Only a tricky, a couple of tricky ones there. Oh, oh, God. Now we have to do this again. And we only have to do this so many times because I've been too meticulous. Oh. I, I felt like I was nailing that there then. Ugh. I just had that thing. You know where, like, um, it's different when you play on a controller, right? And you've got an land analog stick and you have more, like, degrees of movement. But sometimes, I don't know whether you guys ever get this, but when I do like a lot of platforming on a keyboard, I just have this moment where I'm acutely aware of how binary it is, you know? It's like you're going 0 to 100, and it just feels... It really just messes with my perception of the whole procedure. I'm quite happy with my jump dodging here, because uh, for years I did not have that down pat properly. But it just seems to have gone in and stuck now. Right. Well, we're making short work of the trip back. Oh, God. Now, though, the problem is with this as well. Don't do that one so crazy this time. I'm going to be extra nervous now. Also, I'm not a complete div, am I? There, was, there wasn't a camp or anything. Oh, my God, we almost missed that, apparently. Okay. There's no camp. There's no knock a thing down, you know, a mushroom down so I can get back up quickly. Oh god, okay. So I was there. Oh, you bitch. Oh my god, it goes quite a long way, actually. Oh, settle in, guys. This one might be rough. I believe that the title to this video is justified. Considering how long this is. Okay, one. Two. So you just got to get a bit of... See, I think the camera fucked me, actually, a minute ago. All right. Easy. Checkpoint, please. Checkpoint. <laughs> I know I'm... I'm <laughs> being a bit arrogant here, but a checkpoint would be nice. Okay. I'm taking no fucking risks with you. Get, get away from me. They're definitely tankier, aren't they? Only four hits? Was it always four hits for a spider? I think a recolor is the bare minimum. And I think cave spiders work, but I, I don't know about the other enemies. Okay, wait, 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 wait. See, again here, let me auto attack a little mushroom so it comes down, is that right? Can't help it. Got to try. Yeah, this in tribulation mode, it would be like there'd be hidden spikes right here that force you to go along there. But that's the kind of tribulation mode stuff where it's just tedious. You know, it's like, ugh, really? Fuck me. Uh, is that the end up there? I mean, it's got to be, right? Why? I see. Oh, no, I don't want to do this jump anymore. This is so easy. This is trivial. We've done this a million times. Ooh, okay. Just banana jumps. Very easy. Very simple. Oh, my God. I almost... I thought that that was fa failure there. I don't know. The, the slope. I thought it wasn't going to catch me. I thought it was a trick. Do you know what? I'm just ready for one of these to fall as well, you know? Because we've seen that in the other zones. You land on it. It wobbles and falls. Oh my god, these, these, these are not, oh, friendly. Nice, oh. Oh, that's good, that's good stuff. Oh, we get a red. That's the third red. Number three, so we've missed two. Wait, there's a spider there, so where the fuck is that? Where are we now? I get the feeling we're near the end, and we what we've done is we've rejoined the main road. At a bit of an odd point. What's this about actors and singers for the greater picture? Oh, you're talking about JK? Everyone's constantly talking about JK Rowling lately. It's unbelievable. The internet is obsessed. 
Okay, this feels like we're near the beam. Okay, that's where we jump down, the green path starts. This is if we just complete the area normally. So the beam... See, I think I've missed it. The fact that that says as well, World 3, um, Bauble 3. Surely if one of the... Surely if getting to that other chest was achieved subsequent to right now, it would be listed as Bauble 3. I know it's actually kind of looping back to an earlier area geographically, but in terms of how the game is played, that's not the case. The ooze are weird. I kind of don't like them. Do you know what it is? I think it's because they're like Karka, and I instantly have a negative reaction to the Karka. Not in like a bad way, but in a like, I've had a lot of horrible experiences being blinded by Karka in the past. Oh, look at that. You can actually see the chest as well, so they kind of tease you about it. I think this is going to the end of the level here, guys. I will, uh, I will continue along though, just in case. Sorry, trying to read chat here while also swinging my nunchuck and missing quite a few. Uh, there's nothing down there. I mean, there's a chance that you could jump onto this and work your way down and then go there. And I know that seems crazy, but that's exactly the kind of thing Super Adventure Rock does, like the, sh the secret shops and stuff. Here as well, I feel like that slight little bit of light there, it's like there could be a house on the inside. Okay, it's a campsite. Let me see here. So, we've got all the greens. We've got the third red. I guess I'll trigger the, the checkpoint. So, they, yeah, they just changed the checkpoint system. I guess because they didn't like... Um, the previous one, in terms of like how it affected the level design that you have to come very narrow. Oh, of course there's going to be a cage at the end, of course! Oh, do you know what? I actually kind of don't like that. <clears throat> in as much as I would rather the preview level sort of just end halfway through the level, because now I feel like, oh, I've got the whole level, but the magic has gone a little bit. But if I never saw the cage at all, it's like, well, there could be a bit more at the end. I don't know, it feels like a good length, though. Definitely shorter than World 2. I mean, if you were just running through this, you could beat this very quick, I think. But maybe that's a, that's a fine thing. Let me see. I'm going to come up. This is a co cool idea for an ending. I feel like it's a bit cramped, though. They should have pushed these walls out even further so there's more spectacle to, like, whoa, we're in a giant, empty room. Okay, so, yeah, so that's the end. There's no reds hidden here. Okay. So the question is, do we replay it for the other one, or do we try and backtrack here just in case? I think we replay it, actually, guys. I think we replay it. Because the first two greens are right at the start somewhere. How have I missed those? Because I was very slow and very picky and very careful when we started, wasn't I? I? Even I sort of felt like, oh, maybe I'm going a bit slow here. Doesn't it like, there's a really cool room that, a cool corridor, but uh, there wasn't really anything going on in terms of hidden stuff. So, oh, this is cool. The, the twist this time is there's oozes around. I should have dodged that. But they've given me more space to hide from the lasers. Oh, have they changed the laser mechanics? They have. There's a new telegraph, and the laser can shoot us from quite far away. Oh, maybe it's not that, actually. So are they infinitely spawning oozes? Can I still stun him? I'm not very practiced at the moment, as you can see. I have no endurance. This is actually not that good. This isn't as good as fighting him on the ice or anything, let's be real. This is actually almost as easy as the World 1 boss fight. All right, there you go. Five AP. That we're getting bauble bobbles. I wonder whether they put this on the daily rotation. Probably not, right? And I wonder what happens when we warp. 
just straight back to the hub, I suppose. It would have been so cool if they put the genie here or something. You know, and hinted that that old story still was going to go somewhere or mean something or be something. It's just a new attack. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if now, every time we find him throughout the rest of World 3 and 4, he shoots the laser, you know. Alright, yeah, okay, we come back here. Okay, uh, well, I, I will save my, my overall impression, my first impression, until after we get these things here. I know it's a bit weird to talk about first impression when we're trying 100% the thing, but, you know. Do you know what would be amazing is if you had to land at the right place as you were falling here? to get the first green or to get the first red. Wouldn't that be badass? Uh, maybe a bit trolly. Oh, no, no, there's a green there. Literally, you can see one of them. Oh, no, 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 but is that, is that... Respawned green? That might be one respawned. Because obviously they're all back now. But let's... Let's see, was there ever a moment I leant over and grabbed this? No, I don't know. Okay, the only green we're missing is green three. But there's another question, and that is, what? where is the first red? Now, I kind of love the idea that there's a tiny little hole under my feet somewhere here that will let me go underwater in another spot. The thing is, oh shit, well... The thing is, this is a really interesting element of the map that we spent no time in, really. So I wonder whether I I need to pay more attention. Maybe I can fall down there and I'm alright. Maybe I land in the right place. Oh, Ark just bugged as I picked that up. That's kind of weird. But I mean, it's pretty cut and dry what's going on down here, isn't it? I like the idea that there's just a little bit of underwater in this map, and the next map's gonna have a lot more of it. That's cool. But, uh, and you know, they can do so many fun things with that as well. If they're gonna play with the gravity like this, they can use the, the blows and stuff, you know, where you slide around for like whirlpool simulations and stuff. Okay, bugged again. I cannot pick that up for some reason. And now we're back here. Okay, I'm now actively asking chat. Has anyone got any hints for me for the first two reds or the third shit? <laughs> well, we're seeing. All right. Uh, it does not work that way. Or the third green. I feel like there's a red in here, guys. I feel like climbing up. There's got to be a red in here. But that was a hell of a gauntlet for the last red, so... If they have an equivalent gauntlet for the first. Wait, no, I'm doing that wrong, aren't I? It wasn't there. No. I just feel like the first chamber would be such a good place to hide it, you know. If it was hidden that well. I mean, what was going on with all of this? I never came this way before, did I? It's a shame the Choya Miners only exist at the beginning, and they don't really do anything either, do they? So what's the point of this area? This feels like it should lead to something. What, what, what are you letting me do? Jump onto that? Which will let me what? I mean, I don't know. Let's, let's walk up the normal way, because maybe that's something that... I need to do more of. Ooh. Okay. What about this beam? Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, what about that area? That area seems kind of suspect. Because I... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't remember getting that green. Do you guys remember me grabbing that one? That one right there? Oh, maybe I do.
Oh, what am I talking about? There are choy miners. Okay, hold on, hold on. Grab the, the, the campfire. Jump to this. Now that, that's not good enough. Okay, hold on. Alright, I think that that green is the green that I was missing. Because I don't remember doing this. If I did, it was mid-rant. Where <laughs> the rest of my mind was occupied by whatever the hell we were talking about. That's, that's such a weird jump, though. I don't know whether I believe in that jump. Or we could go... I was thinking from there to there, but it's weird with the roof blocking me off. The other thing is, if I could get onto that, but it would be from that, but that's not good enough. I do, I do also somewhat just feel like you could jump onto the edge of that. Oh, well, from like here maybe? But that would be a hell of, that would be a jump dodge, and that would be that's tricky because the, the the ramp is I don't know that that feels like that's deliberately just out of reach, and that's obviously too high. You overcomplicate things again. Why is it whenever I look at chat, people are being snarky and mean? What do you mean I overcomplicate things again? Sorry, I'm not up to your standard. What am I overcomplicating? Over well, I can't just jump to that. I mean, the easiest way would be from on top of this, but there's no way on top of this, this thing. You can basically just walk up from the water side. What here? What? Oh, you can walk up from the water side. What we're trying to do is get onto this. There's a beam. There's a mess of shit there. I mean, maybe from that beam? Oh, maybe, maybe I did get that then. Maybe I'm doing this in reverse. That's the problem that I've got. If I just went back to the start of the level. No, because that's not possible. Oh, hold on though. Isn't that where you come out of the water section? Hold on, hold on. I think we did get that green. I think that's not even a new green. I think what we do... is we come all the way along here. Still can't get that. Oh, there we go. Might be like a lag thing. Okay, when we come up, If we're on that ledge. I don't know how it's fair that I get accused of overcomplicating it when it's a completely different branch of the level. Yeah, and then we come along here and I assume that last time I did it, I made this jump. And I did, yeah, yeah, so we already had it. This was an alternate way up. The thing that tipped me off there was obviously chat mentioning the water side, but also that if the point was to come down, you wouldn't need all of these. This is for coming up. And why would they do that when, you know, you could just drop or whatever? Yeah, okay, so we, we already did have that one. Um... And now we're back to this room, which has the chest and the beam really high up which we're going to want to take a look at here. Also, I wish I knew which green that was. Is that four already? All right, I'm looking at chat. Anyone got a hint for green three? 
Uh, green three is on a hidden cliff. That's not very useful. You can grab by loo looping back from the second checkpoint. We're at the second checkpoint, aren't we? I did pass green three. Loop back from the second checkpoint. Okay, so this is the second checkpoint, I believe. So we could come along these. I don't remember coming here. Onto that platform, maybe? Ah, very nice. Excellent hint there. Oh, I suppose I could have seen that. Oh, no, no. Is that checkpoint? Oh, yeah, this is. This is the start. Oh, that's cool. It unlights the fire. Oh, can I actually go back to previous checkpoints and relight them? Oh, there you go. We got all the greens. We have the mini blue bauble. Shall we rep that, shall we? Oh. Because we have the pink quagon right now. We're actually technically on randomize, which is an amazing update. But we'll de-randomize for now. So there you go. So we have a little bauble following us to completely throw us off whenever we're looking. So obviously, this has allowed me to get a bit higher up in the first route. No, it hasn't. Or has it? If I come here, yeah, I can do that. And I can do that. So I can go in this direction, so... How didn't I get that before? Because all of this is too high, maybe? But wait, this is very weird, because I remember I came here. Remember when we first started playing, I got that blue bauble. And then we came up with this beam. So actually, I was very close to getting green three then. If, if that's all possible in reverse, I just, I guess I just missed it. All right, so what we're looking for is red one and red two. We know the location of one of those. It's in that visible chest. So let's try and figure that out again. There's a chance that there's a red right near us here as well. So uh, I don't know. Anyone got any hints for those? Oh. And from now, from even from as early as here, I'm actually suspicious already. We never managed to get onto that, did we? Oh no, we did, because that was just for that green. So that's all fine. Actually, I shouldn't be suspicious already. Interestingly enough, these crystals, turning a crystal to toggle on a platform, this is actually, this is this the only time this was used in this map? Kind of weird, actually. I was expecting there was going to be a lot of it. Okay, that's good timing. Oh god, I might have fannied around a bit too long there. No, that's fine. Okay, so just... We tried to climb. There's the chest. We see it over there. Destroy the snakes. We checked this little chamber pretty goddamn thoroughly. Oh. You're trying to find red one? Oh, okay. So, sounds like that one's still a little tricky. That's cool. If they've managed to hide one so well that, you know, lots of people scrutinizing the map can't get it too quickly okay so last time we went along these and there wasn't anything there see so like it was just a dead end and I remember I said oh maybe you could bomb the door or something and then we realized well we could just walk along this and then this mess here so the goal is to get onto that now the way forwards in the level is to go down, 
directly underneath all of that mess. And then we're just back in that room that we spent ages on. So we, so I think it's got to be around here somewhere. I'll, I'll collect this green for the sake of it. This is a very odd green. It's just there out in the open. There's nothing underneath. So the idea of looping to it from in front, from a, a ahead of the level, is is nonsense, really, right? You're too much further, because there's nothing. I don't see anything here. Uh, there's no way you would drop down, right? There's no way you would drop down. So... Our only shot, really, is to get on it from here, from this cliff or something. If we were on that, we could... No, I don't know. This, there's something very wrong about this. I, d I don't think this is right. I think this is where we end, isn't it? Isn't this just an alternate way through? I can imagine myself walking along this beam and then hopping down, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Someone else in chat, Manaki, says that. This looks like the part after getting this. Yes, exactly, yeah. It feels like I would hop along and then... This is a way of getting through this sequence without doing, like, this rock. That's kind of what it looks like. Because I can't see any, like... And I, I suppose there's a hidden cave entrance or something up there, but I can't see any way you drop down. And also from here, I can't see any way you jump onto that. It's too far. So I think we go back and we go right up to near the chest where we were before, where I was speculating about the bomb wall. And we just see what we've got. Now, what would be really amazing is if activating this created a platform somewhere that, that was hidden that we didn't know about. Like, it, it doesn't just create that. Maybe it creates... Maybe it lifts something else up and you've got to, like, I don't know. Oh, slingshot it, for fuck's sake. I <laughs> keep forgetting that that one is, uh, is on a timer. Alright. Wait for it to go down. The timing there's got to be good. Actually, it feels like it was very nearly not good. We go along. I think we're okay with this. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we go up past the the snake pit. Oh! Oh! No! 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 Dude! Don't do that. I mean, this pool is kind of suspect too. Maybe it's just there to look pretty. I wonder how they'll feel with the shops around. You know, retrospectively, this will probably be quite an interesting video to go back and watch because eventually the full zone will be in here and things will be reconfigured and changed. And at that point, this will be like weird. This will be the novelty, you know? Enough years pass and it will be the odd moment. Okay, so like, but what would we do? What would we do from here? It is odd they let you come here. I mean, the odds that there's just one bomb spot in the whole preview is just so low. I really don't think it's that. See, if we've got it reversed, because the other option is that is the way up, and this is just how you get back. That's just a nice way for them to let you get back. Look up the waterfall, someone says. Oh, wow. Actually, you're right. Yeah, look up there. But hold on, is that... Is that just a head in the level? Wow. Oh, so wait, what if we go up and then you drop down on top, on top of the chest? From finding a way up the waterfall? Oh! Oh, no, 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 that's just a snake room. There's a regular ball board there. See, and this feels weird as well. Why is this here?
I'm ner I'm nervous to articulate what I'm thinking now because I think I'm going to get accused of overcomplicating things. So I'm just sort of sitting here in silence, <laughs> mostly. I suppose there could be a way... No, no, no. There wouldn't be a way through the... A hidden hole in the waterfall? Yeah, exactly. But, like, where would the most likely spot be that? Could be that. Let's try that. But I think I checked that, didn't I? I feel like I came exactly here and we redid the whole room. Because I checked that hidden spot. That attempted hidden spot. The camera won't clip in there either. I think I checked that. It's funny, the mini did actually catch me there and I did think, oh, there's a bauble. <laughs> no, it was the mini. Three was a hidden hole in water? Well, kind of. Three was also a long, long series of jumps. It was just a hidden hole in the water was a part of it. You're, su you're suggesting that they wouldn't reuse the same technique? I mean, I don't know whether I'd go that far. I think they might. It just... These beams, right? These strike me as odd as purely a mechanism of getting back. Also, look at this over here. The, there's the, the bridge goes like right out over on the left. Oh no, I should have checked the timing. Go. No, but I mean... Because the thing is, by doing the beam as a, as a method of getting back, that's like for speed or efficiency or something for people. But if it's a huge gargantuan detour to even get up there, I mean, do they really care about providing that? I mean, maybe they do, especially if it's going to be a tribulation route eventually. And also, the thing is, if we go much further forwards, we're into, like, Red 3 territory, so it feels like... That's not going to be much of a thing. Just to be clear, has anyone in chat got that chest? Is, does anyone actually know? Uh, has somebody, has some poor bastard been trying to tell me where to go and I've been missing it every time? I'm watching the chat very closely right now. Does someone know? You just got here and funny, I'm just where you are with only three found. There was one. Yours just speculation, you haven't logged in. There, there, there oh, Shroom, you're saying there was someone in chat who had seen it, but they've been, they're being silent now. Oh, damn. Yeah, refreshers are, seems like they're in the same place as me. They have not found red one or two. I like this. I like this like community working together, figuring it out kind of thing. Maybe it's the waterfalls at the checkpoint. Not found one or two. Hey, WP, the first time you caught me live. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It is very difficult to catch me live because I don't make enough stuff at the moment. I don't have a schedule, and YouTube doesn't notify people easily so uh yeah it, uh, it, i have basically made it the worst thing possible to catch me live that's why I, I said a second ago anyone who has found is watching this i do really appreciate it do i want a hint or to tell you well if you've got a good hint uh, uh, hints are fun i don't really mind either way but if you think it'd be more entertaining to have a hint so to be clear t soon soon you have found all of them have you when I did a big jump across some beams by a waterfall, what if you jumped into it? When I did a jump across some beams by a waterfall. On this run or on the previous time through the level? You mean back over there? You know, a hidden thing in that, that waterfall is actually a good idea because it's close, right? You're suggesting that this waterfall might have a hidden room? It's a very good idea. Oh, oh, oh! Did my camera clip in there? Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. How, how do we... First of all... Oh, is that is that it clipping in? 
What is that? No, that's just that. No, that this is a little bit weird and cheaty. First game is how did I? How do? Well, if we get onto all this lower stuff here, well, how's that even going to help me? All right, okay, sorry, sorry. Chat moved too fast while I was looking at that. You found the first red just now. Should you say if you wanna, if you wanna say or you wanna do a hint, that's fine. Um, what's disturbing is there are paths that seem to lead to something, but you can't find anything at the end of them. Well, that's probably just because it's a preview, right? Don't forget there will be shops and all that kind of stuff. Catch that, Bradley. Okay, hint for red too. Here we go, everyone. Same as when you're stuck at the clock tower jumping puzzle. Same as when you're stuck at the clock tower. I'm, I'm guessing you are suggesting that could mean so many things. That's a very vague hint. I'm guessing you mean at the end of the, the clock tower jumping puzzle. It's like, where do I go? What do I do? And then you jump into the clock face. So again, that feels like another way of saying jump into the waterfall. The red crystal thing's really weird. You don't see the point of it. You're convinced to activate something else, but you don't see anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought that just a second ago. Again, it could just be because it's a preview. You've gotten the second one. There's a Reddit thread from two hours ago. I don't, I don't want to just go to Reddit and do it there. I'd rather... Yeah, that's a very cryptic hint. The thing is, have I got the right waterfall? It feels like I have got the right waterfall, though. It feels like that's a very good waterfall to do. Should we just try the jump again? I mean, if it's definitely near a beam of some kind... If I could just get onto this... No, that's not gonna count. All that stuff up there is really interesting as well. What's going on up there on the top right? Can I get up there? Oh, it's like an onion. It just keeps going and going and going. More and more layers. Hold on. Or did you mean way back here? Like that waterfall. Near the green. So you get the green and then you jump in the waterfall. That's a very cool idea. If that actually is it. That is a really cool idea. I don't, this might just be speculation though. I think this is just speculation. <laughs> right, that, oh, we're back, we found, we're back at the start of the level guys. For God's sake. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We will try jumping into that. I don't, it, the thing is this could be not unrelated to that chest. I, I don't think it really looks like it's very close, but um, there are two reds we're missing. So there's every possibility that it's one of the other reds. <clears throat> I don't know why my throat is going. Make that jump. Into the right there. Okay. So we go up. We come out into the main room. So this could be red one. This feels very, very possibly red one to me. I didn't kill these guys earlier. Okay. <laughs> that looks even more and more suspicious to me now as well, every time I pass it. I hear a frog here somewhere. Do you guys just hear that? I definitely just heard a frog. Or maybe he's just lower down and I skipped him. Right. So we're here. That would be a hell of a leap of faith though, because there's so oh, 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 there's something there. There is absolutely something there. Okay. I would assume from the end of the beam, straight in. There, there you go. That's the other side. So it's like there. Oh, I thought we hadn't made it for a second. I really thought we hadn't made it. Hey, look at that. That's very good. I don't know whether that's also the clock tower hint. Okay, that's red one. 
Okay, and we know where red two is. We just got to get to red two. Very good. Sneaky, sneaky. That's, uh, you know, as amazing as that seems, that's pretty much par for the course. For what the, How many secrets are there in the, the, the wild rapid zone? They're exactly like that. Okay, uh, so here I've got a really good idea, and I'm, that is to kill myself, which will put me back at that other campsite checkpoint. Okay. Amazing, you guessed this from my very first playthrough. Oh, there you go. Yeah, right. I don't. I think that that really was. I was following, to be clear, Banjo in chat, and um, and that was not a hint from someone who knew. That was just a pure stab in the dark. So, <clears throat> but this one, I think. Okay, so what's the hint for this one then? Just to be clear, what 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 do we think here? It's probably not a secret thing there. I think though that all of this shit over here is is totally the answer to it. Here's what I think, okay? I think that we need to do this. I did this on my first playthrough. We need to go over here. We need to go onto this, okay? We need to jump across. All of this stuff, I think, we're on the path. I really do think we're on the path, because all of this is, like, so unnecessary and extra. Elsewise. And we did this on our first time through. Now, last time I just jumped down straight away. Maybe I don't need to do that. You want Arena Net to continue the Halloween story about Mad King Thorn breaking up? It would be cool. But, I mean, they sort of do it every year, right? Okay. Yes, that gets us this green. I understand that. That's not, that's not a problem. That's all well and good. See, look at this, look at this. It's definitely up there. We gotta get up there, guys. All right, what you do is you platform along all of this, you jump onto this, and then you're up. And the beam is the exit. That's definitely it. And we know that that's the case because um, there's only one red to find. It's not like there's an, an addendum, an ex extra thing added on somewhere. So the game right now is to get on top of that waterfall. Now that, in theory, could be achieved later in the zone. But I'm more suspicious of that stuff up there. I think that that's the actual answer to it. So I think I think that snake it, or here something about that. Maybe you can bomb up, open that wall or something. Oh, why did I do this again? Why and why did I jump to the right? And my mouse lost traction. But I'm sitting so weirdly right now that my mouse is half off the mouse mat. Well, wow, you got the timing wrong there. Let's let it go down. All right, perfect, actually. Man, I don't know if this is gross or what, but I made a, uh, a frittata today. And I had red pepper in it. And I always, I always want to put pepper in a frittata. But, um... I always regret it later. I just had like a very little burp there and tasted red pepper again. And I, ne and I it just made me realize I never actually like like it that much. I need something better to put in like an omelet or an eggy meal that's like a sort of a, a veggie type experience but isn't a goddamn pepper because I, I, don't, know. I don't like them that much. Right, okay. Don't distract myself here too much. Let's walk in against all of these. Let's even jump against all of them. Nope. Chili. See, I've always wondered about that. I don't know whether it would taste good spicy. Well, we can walk through this one. But that just takes us back out into the room that we were already in. This is actually of no value to us. We fell through this before. So that doesn't actually matter. So that's not good. Now, there's nothing on the ceiling, as far as I can see. And it is quite a climb, you know.
Hmm. The thing is, if it's not in that snake room thing... I mean, this is just so weird. Like, it, it like flows to the right. It's like totally suggestive of us going up there and frantically moving my hand, as if you guys can see. And yet, it's just a dead end. As is this. The thing is, the next room does kind of take us in that area. Not to make it spicy, just add a very small amount. It enhances the flavor. Paprika, as mentioned, is good too. That's just a, tr uh, a tried bell pepper. I think it's the like texture of it as well. What I tried to do today was to like cook the pepper first so that it was softer or... <gasps> no! Why? I spent all that time looking at it thinking, oh, okay, it doesn't move. And then right as I went for the jump, took my hand off the keyboard and everything to like gesture about a red pepper. <laughs> and then that happened. Great. All right, let's go again. Uh, yeah, I tried to like cook it or something early, but because I've always wondered if it's because it doesn't, you know, it always stays a, a quite crunchy and quite, you know, hard when it's cooked in around all the eggs. So I thought, well, cook it first a bit, soften it up or something. Maybe that'll be better. It still wasn't that good. So I think I'm just going to give up on it. Yeah, okay, sorry. I'm not seeing Soon's advice. Here's a better hint. Green six. Ah, oh, well, I don't remember which one the green six was. Well, that hint actually does suggest that it's in the next area, like we were saying all along. But not for the purposes of getting on the beam, like we thought, that we have to wait. But actually, for the purposes of getting on top of that. Did I start with onion and garlic in the pan? Not today, no. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at chat and forgetting about this platform. Okay, this should be good. Someone said in uh, in Discord the other day, I can't remember what people were talking about, but in the uh, the WP content channel, someone was like, uh, oh, WP talks about food so much that blah, 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 blah. Some, some observation about something we've been talking about. And I thought to myself, do I talk about food a lot on my streams and stuff? And here I am talking about frittata, so maybe they're right. Okay. Right, green six. It, it was probably in this next room. I mean... Is there a chance... I just... Oh. Do you know what I thought there? I thought I've done this jump so many times. Just on instinct. I'm a bit like this. I just thought I'm just going to experiment with not jumping. Just because it feels like it will flow better. You know, like I mentioned earlier. So I did it without really considering the consequences and now we have to do it again yeah okay so is it possible that there's like a branch this was not a good choice this was not a good choice okay like you do that same thing you go into the big water room or whatever but this time you go left instead of right or something this is actually a really brutal room to have to do a hundred times we are spending an exceptional amount of time in this area of the map. You could do something like Ashens does and make a food channel where it's just hands. Well, to be honest with you guys, I, um, I've i always liked the idea of doing unboxing -y things and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I did like... Uh, there's a, there is a, I actually had some comments about this about two weeks ago. I don't know whether the person who left those comments uh, will ever hear me saying this. I did respond to them directly, but... You know, it's always hard to tell whether people see the responses. But um, someone was on my Nightfall unboxing video. If you guys don't know, I did unboxing videos for Nightfall around when Path of Fire came out. Because the collector's editions were, you know, they were these big, cool boxes. And in it, I said, well, I'll do a Factions one. And I'll even do a Prophecies one. Um, and I haven't done them. I th Oh, did I do Factions? I'm out. But those were videos with just my hands. The Prophecies one's actually really exciting because... Um, Back in the day, I never owned Prophecies Collector's Edition. Uh, very few people did, because, you know, Guild Wars was a new newcomer and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, people didn't know whether to trust it or whatever. It's even, you know, when you go back to Prophecies launch 2005, 2006, 
This is before big collector's edition boxes even really caught on culturally amongst gamers, right? So, you know, I think a lot of people bought Factions and a lot of people bought Nightfall. But the Prophecies one's actually quite rare. It genuinely is. I certainly never had it. Um, a few years ago, though, my girlfriend bought me the Prophecies Collector's Edition. I do own it. Except I never actually opened it up or looked inside it because I said well I'll do that blind in the video the first time I ever open it up the first time I see what the stuff's like and to play with it I will I'll do that I'll capture that on camera that will be my prophecies unboxing and I'll just do that you know sometime after the, the, the factions or the night for one and that'll be another hands video and I've always been really excited about that but I've never done it. And I still have it. It's, it's funny because I packed it away just the other day. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, I've still never opened this fucking thing. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's a cool idea for a video. I'd like to go back and do it, yeah. Um, so, is this green 6 or is this green 5? I think that's green 6. So, it is a branch. Well, hold on, can I just do, I just want to, just, just... That hint would have been so much better if I knew what green was what. Here, you just walk through, right? And then that's it, it's the, uh... The boss is up through here, right? Am I going to have to do that whole jumping thing again? No, see, that's the final red. I feel like it, it can't be this far ahead. It can't, it just can't be. You think that that one is red, is green seven? The, the one on the waterfall? Sorry, I'm getting hit by ooze here. I love the boomerang, but I don't really have much to use it for. See, my alarm bells are ringing here more than anywhere else. I feel like this is the bit. This has got to be it. You've got to be able to... I don't know. I just, I just don't know. This is just so odd. Let's kill these oozes, because I'm, I'm probably going to be hanging around here for a minute. So green 7 is the waterfall. So that's green 7, you guys are saying. That would mean that this is green 6. How is green six of any use to me? Forgetting the red. That there, that's green six then. I just, I don't buy it. I, I just can't imagine it. Cause like, all of this is for the last red. All of this, so it's not gonna be a hidden hole there, is it? Oh, it's very, very tricky to read the hints when we have delay. Go up the path and jump through the wood. Hidden behind green seven. Waterfall is seven, we just got it. Oh my god. All the comments with just a green and then a number. <laughs> Has anyone got another landmark? Okay, here we go. The Iron Curtains could see a uh, hint. Why was Green 6 such an easy one to get? Oh, Green 6 is the one just sitting out on a platform somewhere. Fuck, it was down there, wasn't it? Why was Green 6 such an easy one to get? I do really apologise if I miss your message, guys. I, uh, I know how frustrating it is to be in chat trying to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a pain in the eyes. This, so this was green six. So this feels like it's in roughly the right area. The, green six was just here, wasn't it? Or oh, it was there? Oh, hold on, hold on. What if it's low down? Oh. Ooh. What if it's like in there somewhere? <gasps> Don't want to run off. It is! Look at that shit! That's unbelievable. Oh, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> maybe not, actually. It felt like there was something there, though. Uh, hold on, where did I... Oh, what a good checkpoint to pick, honestly. Wait. 
No. Not a good checkpoint. I thought it was going to be... The... Oh, no. We have to do the room again. Did I not... Oh... I should have I should have checkpointed. Or was Green Six here somewhere? I mean, I never killed that monkey. I can't believe. Look, guys, we have to trigger a checkpoint on the other side of this room because this is just this is maddening. Wait for it to go down. Why was Green Six afraid of Seven? Cause Seven Eight Nine. <laughs> is that gonna help me get the red? Is it? Seven Eight Nine. Hmm. Hi WP. It said this: the test zone is presented as is and should not be viewed as World Three confirmed, either expressed or implied. Moto, Lord Vanquish, and other residents. Wait, what? Oh, Moto. Oh, that's that's not that's not them signing off. Moto, Lord Vanquish, and other residents of the Super Adventure Box will not be held liable for injuries sustained. Bauble's not intended. Oh, what the fuck? They had. So sorry. The blog post that I skipped actually says that they're not. They're no longer committing to World Three. Ugh. Why is everything with this game laced with some depressing? anecdote or comment why is everything with this game like that now sorry is that is it? I'll, I'll read the block we'll come back to that we'll get the red and then we'll come back to that all right we'll sour the mood with that in a minute give me a second here though let's actually get this i'm rather enjoying myself right now that makes me so sad to think that they have to put that fucking disclaimer there uh okay all right wait 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 finish the room Because there was a green there, right? I'm pretty sure that was green six. And that was where I said, why is that so easy? That's just out in the middle of nowhere. That's really obvious. But before we get green six, let's get the next campsite. This one here. See, actual checkpoint. All right, voila. Now, if this was green six, and if I did indeed see a hole underneath there, it would in theory be a really cool tunnel that takes you along under and then up, or takes you under and then up there. Well, that clearly didn't do anything. Two leap of I mean, all of them will have included going through hidden waterfalls. Let's do a more direct jump. I'm beginning to not believe in this tunnel. Yeah, I don't know if that's a moto quote or if that's a quote from the blog post. That's the thing. That's totally... Look, we're underneath... That, there is one, right? That's definitely... But the thing is, guys, this might not be a passage. This might... There might just be a bit of a lip. There might just be a bit of a lip. Which is what I think it actually is. I think that's just a bit of a lip. WP, it is there. Oh, really? Are you sure? Oh. I don't know. This is a very, very trolly one, if this is true. Let's try more on the right. No. This is those things, by the way. If you guys get Blishard, there'll be a there'll be a marker pack for this soon enough, and that it makes stuff like this trivial. Worked better for you with a normal jump. Oh my god, yeah, I did a normal jump. Oh my god, that's pretty tight though, and it's double layered. I like the double layer. Wow, guys, I can honestly say. Without you guys providing that hint in chat, there's no way I ever would have got that. There's no way. Because we're actually a little bit too far away from where I would have expected. Also, that thing of, like, why is green... Green is telegraphing you to do something else. I get that that's a bit weird, but you would pick... I would pick the green up. And then, you know, just go exploring for half an hour. An hour. And forget that there was ever a green there in the first place, you know. That is a very, very well hidden one. Unbelievably well. And look, it is what we said. Yeah, we're going to go through now. Yellow. This is a cool room. And hey, look, another crystal. So they do reuse it. Okay, so just a regular jump. My attempts at jump dodging to make it easier did not help. All right, okay, let me see. What did that crystal do? Did that raise that? Because that's too far away. 
Okay, so this one's on a timer. The one behind it is what I do like that with. Okay. This is great. This is really big, isn't it? And it's this is definitely where they'll take you for tribulation. You know, it kind of works out that we do a preview version without tribulation, and then years later there'll be one with, hopefully, you know, de depending on what this blog post says. Because um, hopefully we won't be tired of these routes, and it will be novel to go do these routes. Okay, what does that crystal do? See, the cool thing to do with these crystals is like you have to press them in a certain order or whatever. Is it that they opened? It's tricky to see that. Let's see again. If that goes away when that goes red. Yeah, okay, all right. So run, 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 run. I have not figured out. Oh, okay, hold on. There's two of them. Ah, and then you got the little one. See, that's good, but I think they should reverse it. They should have it such that you want to put the little one up first or whatever. You know, make it a little bit tricksy. Because this is just as simple as just run along swinging away. There's no puzzle to that, is there? Alright, cool. Oh, an ooze ambush. Let's use the elite, which we haven't done yet. I can't remember what was with data mind about that elite, if there was ever going to be like an AoE version. I really don't like the Super Adventure Box combat. It feels like the worst of all Guild Wars combat. Floaty, weird range. You know, imprecise, especially when you play with a little bit of latency. Hey, you can't have everything. Can we clip half into this? This looks dodgy as fuck. Alright, that's okay. That's why it looks so dodgy, because it wasn't actually possible slash necessary. Ah, I really wanted to get up there. I guess I don't need to worry about finding secrets within secrets now because, you know. Alright, cool. Here we go. This is good. So we're going to use the slingshot to create a path. The question is, do we do we do it early? Oh, that one. Oh, okay. Right. So the first one's on a timer. So that should be alright, I think. I think I've got that done. Actually, very, very well. I'm surprised how accurate that was and how perfectly that lined up. See, these rooms are all a bit big and open and barren, but I'm sort of fine with it when they're optional rooms that feel like this. I do think that this level feels a bit open and empty and barren in the main areas, in the main thoroughfares, you know. And it's a bit light on new assets. And actually, is that a new colour of snake? Yellow? Are the original ones green? I, I would look at the mini, but it doesn't really help because it has the big filter on it. <clears throat> Where it just looks holographic. Because, you know, those minis you're meant to think of from the context of using them in regular Tyria. I guess I should be a little bit careful here. There might be any number of traps. Fake floors. All right, oh, I see where we are now. We're, we're up. We're at the top bit. We're really high up. Okay, hold on real quick, because I did sort of just speed through that very, very, very fast. Oh, no, that's the chest. This is where the chest is. That's where the chest is. Weird. Okay, so there's a, there's a branch. We came up from down there. If you go up here... But there's no picker. There's, no, there's nothing to get. What's the point of this area? Just to bait you into falling? Uh, it doesn't look like it really matters which one I do first. So I'm going to go for the chest first, I think. Okay. Yeah, we're up here where I was sneakily looking ahead. Okay. Wait, there you go, guys. This is it. Documenter of Secrets under three. And we get one of the uh, the weapons here. I'm going to go for focus. As focus is... Oh, well, I can't open it in here. 
But I'll go for a focus. Focus is usually what I pick up. So there you go. So, uh, and now you'll notice that I can't look for festivals anymore on the left. It's because there's no longer any achievements for me to do again. So let's just remove the filter. So yeah, we're good there. We're good there. Good there, there, there. There's the annual. So this is where a lot of AP comes. What? There's no AP? Hello? Isn't there usually 50 AP from that? Or am I reading that wrong? I thought there was 50 AP on the annual stuff. And it was like 10 years to get them all. Alright. So with that done... We could go along those beams now as well, just for the satisfaction of collecting those baubles. It's interesting, you'd think they would have done a blue bauble achievement, because why not, right? I don't really like the blue bauble achievements too much, because they always feel like, you know, you're hunting for needles and haystacks. So this, I assume, the full level... The full level would, would have stuff for this. This is just a bit of a weird dead end right now. How did I get the box? Wait, what box? What, the one we just got from doing the achievement? I did the achievement. <laughs> Alright, okay, and then the beam. So what would Tribulation do, right? It would just add spikes all along here. That's what Tribulation would do. Just all down it. So you jump along, you jump to the green, and you go under. No, it would just add this extra leg to the level, basically. And just purely for the satisfaction of being up here. And I do feel satisfied now being up here. Let's get the bauble. Waha! You know what's a really cool idea? That then they hide something underneath. They should totally have something there, or I don't know. You can blow open that wall or something. Well, brilliant. Nice, nice, uh, nice hints and clues, guys. In the end, I think actually uh, that last red, we definitely needed a clue, but we sort of managed to figure out the other ones. <coughs> Blind, collectively. And uh, yeah, I won't, I won't finish the level. Let's, uh, let's, let's load on out. Yes, this is, this is World Three Zone One. Uh, that's what this is. Okay, so just to round this out, I'm going to go to this blog post now. Because I want to see what the blog post actually says. It's on the official ArenaNet website. If someone reminds me, I'll put it in the description. Super Adventure Festival 2023 begins today. They have the, they've linked their trailer, the same trailer. So, oh, here, here's the parade. I swear there was something. Like these guys, these little robbers, weren't they? Oh no, they're just bonus level guys, aren't they really? Spider, B. Alright, maybe not. Maybe maybe we've seen everything. Okay, our beloved Super Adventure Festival has begun in Ratasoom. Sorry, let me get chat up so I can read it while we do it. Uh, I'm not, I haven't got this on screen, obviously. Uh, everyone's welcome to join. This yearly festival is live. It's accessible to players of any level. Where to go? What to do? Just a big, long, slow explanation about Super Adventure Box, which is good in the year following the Steam release. Uh, if you like a laid-back adventure exploration mode, that's what they've renamed it to. Uh, the journey begins in World One. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plenty of rewards to earn this year. A mace, a rifle, a dagger. Retro forged weapons. I don't really think they look that great, by the way, but yeah. Uh, complete the nostalgia achievement to earn a classy generation one. The power gloves. And there's like three versions. All right, here we go. Test zone. It's literally a paragraph here, guys, at the end. This year, Moto is inviting heroes to the test zone, asterisk. So we'll read the disclaimer in a second, the asterisk on Test Zone. A Test Zone, a new area he's working on. The Choya Miners are still carving it out, so it's not completely finished. But Moto will welcome your help testing the area that's available. To visit the Test Zone, pick up the note of the, on the door of World 3 ha House in the Hub and follow the instructions. Have fun. And then the disclaimer is, the Test Zone is presented as is and should not be viewed as World 3 confirmed, either express or implied. Moto, Lord Vanquish, and other residents of the Super Adventure Box will not be held liable for injuries sustained in the Super Adventure Box. Bauble is not intended for human, or Asura, nor nor consumption. 
I don't know, that's a weird one, isn't it? Because I, I actually, I don't know whether this is just my own ineptitude here. You guys are welcome to say it. I don't know if they're joking there. <laughs> I've had that a couple of times recently, but I genuinely don't know if that's a joke. I mean, it reads like a joke. The, the second sentence, at least. It reads like a disclaimer of, like... Teehee! You know, like, you know, some medicine disclaimer or whatever. They, they read out really fast. But, uh... I, I don't know. It, it's an odd joke, isn't it, to make? It seems like a weird thing to joke about when after 10 years they've been a bit waffly about whether it will come in. If it's sincere, if they're sincerely saying, don't take this as confirmation of World 3, I think that's unbelievably... It's got to be a joke, guys. I think it's just a weird joke. God, the communication in this between the community and this, and this studio is just so broken. I'm really sorry to do this, because I keep saying this over and over and over again, but as following Paradox Game Studios, where every week they just have a dev diary where they talk about what they're doing, weekly communication, and, you know, they'll engage quite vigorously on Reddit and the forums and stuff. It feels so weird. Why do I have to speculate whether that's a joke or not? I think it's a joke. It's a shit joke. Ooh, let's joke that we're not confirming World 3, even though we're adding World 3. That's that's a shit joke. And that's a weirdly uh, inappropriate joke. I would, not that I'm really a stickler for that kind of thing, but it feels like, do you know what? People just want to be hyped and happy that there's World 3. They don't want to hear you weirdly, waffly joke that there's not one. I, I genuinely think that's that's bad communication. You guys can go read the blog post if you like for yourself and think about it, but I, I think that's bad. I don't know what that is. It's so weird. It, it, I don't know whether it's a joke. I think it is. I'm like 65%. It's, a, it's certainly they've tacked a joke onto it. I mean, why write that? You put the fucking zone in. I kind of get the perspective of, well, look, we want to under-promise and over-deliver. That's obviously the way you want to do things. And I'm shit at that. I mean, Christ, I'm not one to speak. I, I, I over-promise and I don't finish the shit that I'm doing. I mean, Christ, look at this. How long have people been waiting for FF6 now? Two months, all right? I, I, know, I understand what that means to try and keep expectations low. But I don't think that's the right place for it. You just put the fucking level in. But hey. Well, there you go. A weird note, a bit of a somber note to end on. Somber, is that the right word? Uh, that's that's World 3. My take is it's, it's an okay level. Um, I think... Uh, I, here's the crucial thing. I think if that was... If they had given me that and said that's final, I think I would have been disappointed in it. Luckily, they didn't do that. They said it's a test thing. It's it's it. We're working on it. So the final level, I'd want to see shops... I would want to see power-ups. I'd want to see new enemy varieties. But even the level itself, I want to see more like environment assets and stuff, you know? When I load into... Um... I mean, do I pick my favorite level? When you go to like the ninja level, right? The pain cliffs. It feels dramatically different, you know? There's lots of new enemies that you're fighting. The, mu the, the music was a bit lackluster there as well, I think. You know, the, the kind of terrain that you're traveling through, yeah, it feels a bit cavey there. I would want some dark areas. I like that, that tease about the underwater stuff. But I feel like they haven't made a particularly distinct environment there. It feels, you know, even down to the trees and stuff that you get here, right? And I, th I feel like that was generally true and strong for all the zones. The swamp feels very different to the level prior, you know. The rapid level feels very different to this. The snow mountain feels very different. But I don't know, a lot of that felt feels a bit barren. So I don't know. I think I, I think I would be disappointed, but it's a test. So hopefully it, it, it's much improved when we next see it. Uh, my gut tells me it won't be, though, by the way. My gut tells me that usually with stuff like this, the improvements we'll see are minimal. Uh, in terms of length, I think it's a good length. I like the short length. Um, so once again, here I am bemoaning that the quality isn't higher, but that's sort of how I feel. It could be a test zone on the same level that the glitch weapons are glitched. Oh, so you think that they're like, they're not committing to a new world, they're just committing to this glitch storyline? I mean, what, why would anyone ever consent to that? That's such a weird direction to take it in. 
but yeah um so there you go guys that's uh that's my coverage of it about two hours oh my god nearly three hours what the fuck i just looked at the clock and it was about two hours and it's been 44 minutes since then uh it's been really nice to catch up with you guys uh just to be clear uh, you might see me for that scribing video or another fishing one i will try to dot in some more but because i am very busy and shuffling stuff around at the moment next the rest of this week and next week is still going to be a bit hectic okay after that we'll be back on track and it'll be nice and normal and and we should be all good um I, I, I should have done more last week, frankly. Uh, but yeah, so I will see you all very soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, it's been really nice to touch base with you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you uh, very, very, very shortly. Uh, videos like this I like, but they're always a bit annoying because they get buried under the live tab. Um, but yeah, and for people who are still wondering what my plan is, it's still the same. We're going to finish six. We're going to finish Shadow. And then I want to pick up Endwalker, frankly. That's one of the big things that you'll be seeing me doing a lot of. And if Guild Wars continues to do meaningful updates and changes, I'm, I'm all for it. I like this new item thing. If anyone's got any theories about why they are now, you know, they say if it's exotic or ascended or whatever, and you mouse over on the tooltip, what that's in service of. It'd be quite interesting. Uh, so, yeah, thank you, everybody. And, um, yeah, I guess I will... Oh, and really, really eagle-eyed people might see... That I post some more stuff on the uh, the Steam Workshop for Stellaris. It's not really Guild Wars related, but over the next couple of days that might happen as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you everybody. Hope you enjoy. See you next time. Uh, and yeah.